All right, what's up guys? Again, second one, finally. Um, I'm excited. I got a super awesome guest today, Chris Cano. I'm gonna say Cano, because my grandmother and the Hispanic in me would slap me if I said Cano. <laughs> I know everybody calls you that. <laughs> but I'm excited to have you on, man. And second episode for me, it's big. Um, I'm excited. First one, I was nervous. Now I'm, now I'm pumped. I'm, I'm nervous just because I wanna make sure this, this story that you have to tell is going to be done well, right? Because we've already talked for hours now, you know, before we met up here in Houston. And then last night we talked a little bit more. And your stories, it's worthy, man. And I think it needs to get out there and, and be told to people. But I'm going to start with a small introduction, man, if, if you're okay with that. that cool? Yeah, so, yes, sir. So the viewers know. So Chris Cano, <laughs> not Kano, or <laughs> Kano to his other friends. You start, you start, you you lived in Tucson, Arizona. It's where, you, where it all started for you. You joined the army a little bit late in life not i'm not saying late but you know typically everybody joins right after high school you you kind of explored life a little bit before and then you join the army sounds like your army career was almost over you were getting to get ready to get the hell out of there and then you found a dude at the gym that just changed your perception of, of things and you became a green beret right you you served you served as a green beret you jumped in jumped into that shit quick um went to afghanistan multiple times you got a bronze star with V, right? Um, medal, or no, sorry, you didn't get a medal. <laughs> I see. I told you earlier. I was, I'm gonna give you all these extra awards, man. Don't worry. Uh, that'd be no, awesome. you got, yeah, you got your you got your uh, purple heart, and uh, sound like you had an interesting career in, in the army, and you got out, and you also faced a little bit of adversary when you were getting out, and now you're a state police officer, and you have your company, Team Room Tactical, and obviously I'm gonna leave it there because we're gonna now get into it. I want to hear it, but. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on to the show. Appreciate it. And pleasure to be here. Um, we obviously had a pretty good dinner last night. I mean, yeah. got a lot of talking done. Yeah. Great whiskey. Yeah. Great chow. It was good. It. Yeah. <laughs> a good time. Scarves, even though mine wasn't burning correctly. It, was <laughs> <laughs> but it went well. Definitely good. So let's start, man. Let's start your, your life as a young kid in Tucson, Arizona. How does it go? I grew up in Tucson, um, middle child of three. So I got... Older brother, younger brother. Um, when our dad was in the picture, he was uh, wasn't really around a lot. You know, um, he kind of abusive to my mom, abusive to us, and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, it, was, it was it was pretty wild growing up. He never really had a um, uh, a place to call home. You know yeah. what I mean? It was yeah. we were always bouncing around. Yeah, different house, different house, east side, west side. We're always always moving. Never really had a home to call. You know um dad was always in trouble all with law uh drinker obviously drugs yeah um didn't make life easy you know what i mean so my mom was always you know a wreck so yeah. um i guess one big night you know it was probably one of the biggest things that happened to us as kids where he kind of left our lives like for the good i would say yeah. um we're huge fight you know my my dad and my mom or my, my dad and my mom they get into a huge fight you know i remember hearing it outside you can hear um you know obviously crying choking yeah just you know abuse noises you know i can yeah. hear all this crazy stuff going on I open the front door the patio where they were fighting um and then um it was pitch black i can't see what's going on i'm a young kid yeah. i want to say five six years old you know and then uh flipped the light on and that's where i see you know, my dad obviously hurting my mom, but he didn't like that either because now I could see him. So he, you know, he grabs you by the throat, tosses me across the across the room. Yeah, Jeez. so I'm flying. Um, but you know, I guess what the good thing was, all that attention was off of her now. Yeah, you know, that attention was on me. So it, which I I saw it as a good thing. You know, what I mean, it's my my mom was not getting hurt. Your mom. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, this fool was. Chasing me around the house, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing at it, you know. Yeah. He's drunk, gone drugs. Yeah. He ain't catching me, you know what I mean? But it brought the attention off my mom. Yeah. Later that night, he ends up, you know, leaving drunk. Um, you know, he's I think he has he got to run in with the cops again. He uh, gets pulled over. He fights the fights the cops and stuff like that. And ends up going away for like a really long time because he was like I guess he hurt a couple of cops or something like that. Yeah. I don't know the full story. I really don't even care about the whole story about him, but <laughs> so back when the law actually still put you in jail for a while. Right? Yeah, 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 especially fighting back, yeah. you know. So, yeah. um, he went away for probably about 
18 to 20 years. I couldn't even give it. Wow. Exact, but he, was, he was gone. He was out of our lives for like yeah. the remaining time, which was a good thing, but kind of hard on my mom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She worked for four jobs. And mom's a saint. You know, my mom, she lives the pretty tough life, too. You know, yeah. Taking care of three wild boys. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it, was, it was pretty rough on her, but, you know, she tried her best to make us happy. Yeah. So I definitely appreciate her for that. So after all this happens, your dad's in jail. You mm-hmm. kind of grow up without that father figure in your life. Yeah. Um, what kind of, what led you to where eventually you, you, you ended up switching like, hey, all right, I'm going to, obviously we're not going to get into the military yet, but mm-hmm. what led you towards that point? Like what? How did you guide your life? Like, where were you at? What were you doing? As a teenager, I was really r- pretty much lost in where I was yeah. going. I didn't, really didn't know and what I was to guide doing. You. No, I had definitely had no one to guide yeah. me. I think the only fire, father figure we had was football coaches, wrestling yeah. coaches, stuff like that. You know, it was like closest thing we had. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really know what my plan was. You know, yeah. after after high school and all that. Yeah. My brothers did. Both of my brothers were you know, solid dudes. Knew exactly what they wanted, where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> I was the middle child. I know. I don't know what I was doing. Just trying to make my way through life. I like right? how you say you solid dudes, like you're some dirt bag or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was back in the yeah, day. Yeah. I was not an easy kid to yeah. to uh, you know, to love from my mom. It's better you know? to be the dirt bag early in life, right? So that way you can get it all figured out. Builds can. character. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's what I kind of fell into. You know, being a mechanic and all that. Yeah. Fell in love with that building low riders from like the ground up as nice. a kid you know like in high school it was fun it was i loved it yeah i thought i was gonna make that my life you know? yeah um 2008 rolls around i don't know if you remember those days of yeah. obama days where yeah the recession hit people losing their houses losing their jobs yep. i was a mechanic at a toyota dealership at the time um that's when they you know they laid me off yeah like Man, what am i gonna do now yeah I had How old were you at this time? I was 19. 19. Well, I actually, I had, so I, I'm going to skip parts. I had a, my son at 19 years old, so yeah. I had to start a little early. You know, I had to yeah. start life a little early. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, you know, me and his mom, they were kind of busting our ass just to, you know. Keep things going. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was tough. Especially yeah. around those times. Yeah. Um, you know, until 2008, my son's a little older, um, about 24 years old at the time. Yeah. Get laid off, you know. That's my side to like. I'm, I'm joining the army, you know. Yeah. Have a solid paycheck. You know, it was the way to go at the time. And Afghanistan war was kicking off, uh, so recruiting was pretty. So, we're recruiting a lot, you know. Yeah. So you go to the army. Mm-hmm. What do you do in the army when you first get there? Like what? Like, you know, obviously you didn't start off right away as a Green Beret or anything. So no. What? What? Uh, how did your army career start? Um. Funny story. Um, so I go to the recruiters. Yeah. You know, they, over there in Tucson, they have a recruiting station. It's got all branches. You know, it's got you know Marines, Army, Navy. Yeah. You know, all in one, but co-located with each other. It's like a car dealership. <laughs> yeah. Come on by. <laughs> I go up there. You know, that first door I hit was the Navy. You know, uh, like I want to join the military. Yeah. You know, like I didn't even, I didn't, they didn't say one word to me. Walked into the Navy. And he's like, looks at me. And he's like, not one word. He's like, no. He's like, all right, well, go to the next door. <laughs> go next door. Air Force is there. Looks at my tattoos, and he's like, you got a, uh, you got a degree? I'm like, no, man. <laughs> I got no degree. He's like, go try the Marines, man. Like, go to the Marines. And Marines are a little little unconventional way they're recruiting. You know, they're, yeah. they're wild, man. Wild dudes in there. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand that one. <laughs> yeah, you're a Marine, man. Yeah. This guy, you know, I'm taking the ASVAB, you know. And then, uh. The one of the big, big old dude, uh, Marines. As I'm taking the ASVAB, he's like, he's like interrupting me. I was I'm trying to take the ASVAB, you know. He's on the phone. He's like, he's got a tattoo on his what? On his saluting hand? Hell no! Nah. <laughs> hangs up on this person. I don't know. Fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm looking around. I was like, dude, I might be in the We're wrong good place. We're good this month. We don't need that tattoo <laughs> waiver, you know. <laughs> I was like, man, I might be in the wrong place, man. Shit. So I ended up taking the ASVAB. Like, come, come back next week or next month or something, yeah. you know. It's like I want to. I want to go now. And I'm trying to get, recycles. Yeah, I'm trying to get out now. <laughs> yeah, go over to the army. They check my ASVAB. Like, yeah, we get you out tomorrow. What job you want? I was like, you just give me whatever you give me. Now I just want in. Yeah, I just want in. Like, we can get you out of here tomorrow. Take this like practice PT test and you're gone. You know, like, all right. Damn. Yeah, I was gone the next day. 
Fuck. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And they just loaded a bus. Sounds like the fastest recruiting story I've ever heard. Yeah, it was pretty quick, yeah. man. I think they had like a you know, big push right there. Yeah. They, just they had a lot of dudes needed, in a needed. van. Yeah. Load us all up, and then we were out to MEPS in Phoenix. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> pretty quick. So at any point of your, like your younger life, not not trying to go back, but at any point, did you ever think, I'm going to join the military? I want to join the military? No. Like, this is- I mean, I, I'd hear a bunch of other dudes in, you know, in high school that I can yeah. join the military. I mean, it was an option for me, but I never really thought about doing it. You Do know? you remember 9-11? Oh, yeah. Do you remember what you were doing? I was in sophomore yeah. high school watching, yeah. you know, before we went to school, yeah. it was on live TV and going to school and it was on the, in the TV in the classroom. Yeah. You know, so never crossed, day. like, I mean, I know some people like have stories like, yeah, I remember seeing those towers get hit. And like, yeah. at that point I knew I was going to go be, you know, Navy SEAL. I'm like, yeah, all yeah. right, like, let's settle down now. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of us didn't think that right away, but it was eventually like, you got to get these guys back. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, So, because I know a lot of people say, like, that was the reason why I joined and stuff. But it sounds like you you had life go, and then, you yeah. know, that 2008 time frame came in and kind of yeah. hit you, and you said, hell, I'm going to the Army. And they yeah. they did it well. They got you in in a day. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I never really thought about it when I was in high school. But, you know, once I graduated, I had another buddy that, that joined the Army, yeah. uh, Martin Lugo. Yeah. We grew up together. He ended up, you know, dying in Afghanistan Shit. in 2005, somewhere around there. So, so you joined the army, and what what MOS do you go in as? I go in as combo, yeah. um, not knowing what anything yeah. out that is. I don't know if yeah. they off a GT score. I don't know how they did yeah. it, but guy just chose it, took it, and got out of there. You know. And and for the listeners who don't understand, like the, the I know last time they were like hey, acronyms are a little hard, so just kind of like rephrase on on combo comms. It's it's communications, right? Yeah. Running radios and communications within the military and whatnot. So that's what you started your career as. Yeah. So you go to comm school, or you. Go to boot camp. How was that? How did how did it feel during boot camp? Was it, was it hard? Is it easy? Like um, it was actually pretty easy for yeah. me, man. It wasn't it wasn't bad at all. It was. I, mean, I played football. We went to football camps. Yeah, it's basically what it was, you know. So yeah, we gave each other shit. Like it was. It wasn't that bad. You yeah, know? yeah. It was a little little break from away from home. You know, the hardest. <laughs> and I'm getting paid, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah. You know? I think the hardest thing for me going to Marine Corps boot camp was I was a shithead. I, I I thought my voice was the loudest. I thought I was like, <laughs> I, you know, I'd yell at my dad sometimes, my brothers, and be like, man, fuck you. You know, I was that kind of guy. And then I went to Marine Corps boot camp, and I realized that didn't get me far. Like, it's like <laughs> that wasn't working out for me. And I think that was the hardest thing for me, but it humbled me because I went from being a little dickhead to like, all right, now I, I need to be respectful to to a certain aspect, right? And like, yeah. the, the, the physical partner thing, like, it's tough, but it wasn't like, oh, my God, tough. But like you said, I you know, did sports and – yeah. I grew up. I grew up in a Hispanic community where grew up you know, in a rough neighborhood. Yeah, man, just throwing blows in the alley yeah. and stuff like that. Like you know, that was that was common. You know, yeah. um, I was the youngest of three brothers, so I was not really afraid of a fight either. So that wasn't exactly. hard. But for me, it was hard. Like actually trying to restrain myself from being that little shithead kid that I was before. Yeah. To you know, going out there and yeah. you know, I, I I tried it once. I cussed out a drill instructor. That didn't work out at all for me. Like a fucking tray of chow went flying at me. And I still love bad. seeing those dudes that yeah. that try that out and I, completely well, get wrecked. And that was me. Awesome, I tried man. it out and I got humbled real quick mm. afterwards by like all of them. So what were yeah. you thinking, man? Yeah, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Team Room Tactical. Team Room Tactical was founded by Green Beret veterans to honor the culture and history of our armed forces. At Team Room Tactical, they offer a premier Cerakote and laser engraving service. They specialize in elevating your firearms and an extensive array of products to new levels of personalization and sophistication. Their team of skilled individuals combine state-of-the-art technology with meticulous craftsmanship to bring your visions to life. Whether you're looking to add a unique touch to your firearms, enhance the aesthetic of your accessories, or create memorable gifts, they offer a tailored experience to meet your individual needs. From vibrant color schemes to intricate engravings, they take pride in delivering unparalleled quality and attention to detail. They transform ordinary items into extraordinary pieces that reflect your style and personality with their custom Cerakote and laser engraving services. Head on over to teamroomtactical.com and get your custom services done by these guys. Amazing dudes doing amazing things. Go check them out, teamroomtactical.com. So you go to comm school and everything. What what happens after comm school? <laughs> they um so we're in the final formation you know we graduate and all that stuff and you uh people start raising their hands like who wants to go to this school who's who wants to go airborne you know like i'll go airborne you know like the yeah. only one raised my hand for airborne school yeah. like, i'll go airborne 
boom, jump on a bus. I'm on a bus to Airborne School. Everyone's on their way to, to their units, you know, happy, yeah, happy dudes, you know. Um, go to Airborne School right after that. And the first time, you know, seeing the actual Army. You know, it was, yeah. still, it was still in, you know, training phase, but seeing the Army had a little bit of freedom. And yeah. Airborne School was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess airborne school for, I mean, I always say it this way. Like, I don't say like the new guy, I see, I see boots, right? Oh, yeah. you're, you're a boot. You're Definitely going a boot. Air, yeah, you're going to airborne <laughs> school. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, a lot, yeah. there's guys that have been in for some time trying to go to airborne school. Oh, yeah. They can't go, you know? Yeah. So it's, All they do is raise my hand. Yeah. So at airborne <laughs> school, how does that go for you? You get it done? and Yeah. Uh, easy. I mean, PT test, PT test. You know, yeah. pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, first, I was never really a heights guy either. Yeah. You know I mean? I hated heights. Uh, but I think in all the training, man, it made it a whole lot easier you yeah know, it, it, i hear a lot of people that are you know, scared of heights yeah you know? but you know getting right through it airborne because yeah. all the training they give you, you know, it's, yeah it's pretty tough you know? nice jumping out of towers and stuff so, so you finished airborne mm-hmm. and then where do you go there after that? um take a little get my little block leave or yeah go home and all that but i ended up getting um assigned to usasoc okay so now i'm assigned to usasoc you know huge special operations command yeah so my first unit you know, E3, first yeah. unit, use a sock. I don't know what I'm doing, man. You I, thought you were cool with your airborne tab, and all yeah. of a sudden you go see these guys, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, shit. Yeah, you know, these Green Berets walking yeah. around everywhere, you know? Yeah. And never really knew. I knew who Rambo was, but I never yeah. knew what a Green Beret was. You know? Yeah. <laughs> everyone's Green Beret. Everyone's got rank. Everyone's walking around. But everyone's pretty cool, you know? Helped me out, you know, learning the Army. Um, I had a lot of freedom when I was in use sock, too. I'd be always at the gym, you yeah. know? Uh, I never really knew what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. I had a job, but no one really needed this job at the time. And you know, I'd be at the gym running all the time at the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're in USASOC. How long were you in USASOC for? It was about two and a half years. My contract was coming up. Okay. Yeah. And what were you thinking at that point? I'm, I'm going to get out. You're getting like, out. You see. Like, I'm kind of like. It's boring. Yeah, it was boring, man. Yeah. We're like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting any rank here. I'm not getting any awards. I'm yeah. not. Like, what am I doing here? I'm not, I had no purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. You know, my family was happy. We, you know, we had a house and all that stuff and yeah. brag. Um, I was, I'm going to get out. I had talked to uh, General Mulholland at the time. He mm. was, he was, you know, was a general out there. Cool dude. Yeah. Awesome guy. He's always coach, teach, and mentor, you know, pretty much everybody, you know, but he's yeah. a really down earth guy. Really cool. Yeah. Um, Telling him, telling a bunch of all these other Green Berets, and I was like, I'm getting out. Like, I'm not. Yeah. There's nothing for me here. Like, I'm going to get out, get a job. Yeah. A normal human. Yeah. Um, and then and that's they started coaching me up. Like, yeah. Hey, before you get out, just go to selection. You know? You go, go to selection. <laughs> yeah. Try it out. You make it. You don't. Whatever. You know? Yeah. Like, you know what? I'll give it a shot, you know? Actually, backtrack before that. Um, it, one of the, it's one of those... Um, formation things happen yeah. yeah i'm in a formation they asked me this is way well before even thinking about selection you know yeah. they it's one of those formations they're like, hey who wants to go to seer school i'm just an e3 you yeah. know i don't know what i'm doing like who wants to go to seer school i really didn't know what seer school was you know yeah all right <laughs> school i'll yeah. go to seer school yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'll do it send me i was like the next week off to seer school e3 Oh, they're just dropping quick packages. Yeah, like, hey, you got in quick. You go to school yeah. quick. Yeah. So I'm there at Sears School with a bunch of, uh, you know, Q course dudes. Yeah. You know, everyone there is in the Q course yeah, or they're a pilot. They're doing that because they're yeah. going somewhere. It was yeah. 2010. I was yeah. there in 2010 doing Sears School, E3, a bunch of Q course dudes, yeah. Ranger Bat dudes, pilots and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, hey, you had your airborne tab, though. There you go. Yeah, I was already, I was, really, <laughs> I was all airborne. And, yeah. But you know, I, was, I was in shape, I was fit, yeah. you know. I, I'd meshed well with all these, you know, Q course guys, and it was, yeah. it was fun, man. It's like, man, this is this is my community right here. Like, yeah. I like these guys. Yeah, these guys are hard charging dudes, rucking for miles, man. Yeah, <laughs> forever. These guys were nonstop. Yeah, I like to. I'm tired. <laughs> um, you know, I come back and everyone's like, you know, all the rest of the combo combo nerds out there, they're like, man, you went to Sears school. <laughs> Your school, dude. <laughs> How do I do that? Just raise your head. Raise your head, dude. <laughs> so, so you go to Sears School, you finish that up, you get back to USASOC, right? Yeah, yeah. And then 2000, man, I can't even tell you what year. 2011. Yeah. 2011. I ended up going to Ranger School. Okay. Um, and then after all that, 
this is while still youth soccer. 2011, go to Ranger School. At the end of it, I go to Selection. You know, this is when I was like, yeah, I'm trying to yeah. get out. You know what I mean? So uh, you you went to Ranger School first. Yeah. And you completed Ranger School. Already. I got hurt in Ranger you School. Got hurt. Okay. Yeah. So you you didn't you didn't get the Ranger tab. Didn't get the Ranger tab. I got the pre Ranger tab. <laughs> but you ended up getting a Green Beret tab. Ain't yeah. got some shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 Ranger School ain't no ain't no joke, man. It's a, yeah. It's a beast. Yeah. Like, it's it's tough. I'm always pretty impressed when all everyone's you know yeah they got, they got their tab you know like, yeah it's, it's a tough school man yeah that's really tough school and obviously we'll we'll uh we'll get into some more about that school and what's, oh, yeah. what's recently happening at yeah, that yeah. school that you you told me this morning yeah for sure while we're having breakfast but we'll talk about that later but so you don't you don't get through ranger school you get hurt you mm -hmm. go back to use sock yeah and this is when you're now starting to think like i'm out of this I'm place out. i'm done yeah now yeah um drop my packet yeah you know my units like yeah go i don't care yeah, go out here yeah, hope you make it you know get out of here yeah. um in selection you know i did it was the 21 day you know selection yeah it was uh it's pretty rough man but it's nothing compared to the q course you know? yeah. I, I thought man this is this is hard you know yeah a lot of running a lot of rucking pt tests and it was a lot man. it sounds like there's no real rhyme or reason on who they select right it's just I, as long as you make the gates, yeah, yeah. As, yeah. as long as you make the gates, you will get in. Yeah, it's it, it's it's tough. You know? yeah. It's not as bad as a Q course. It gets harder. Yeah. yeah. So how how did you feel during selection? Like was it like was it tough? And you still felt like you can get through it, or just like do you have moments where you're like, nah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. No, no, not at all. I knew what I wanted. A lot of dudes that think like that while they're in selection, they usually drop. Cause yeah. They'll, they'll drop it, you know. Like yeah. you have to really, definitely want it. There's a lot of pain, a lot of you're tired, cold, tired, and hungry, man. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot to it. So 21 days selection, yeah. Yeah. and after that, you get through. Yeah, happy, I'm happy yeah. as hell, man. Like hell, I made it. Yeah, yeah. I made it through. I this. guess I'm staying in. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm staying in. And then how long after when you go to Q course? Um, immediately. Immediately. I think the next Q course date was like two weeks afterwards. So You're all I did was fast basically tracking, man. I was out processed through yeah. my unit in two weeks, and then right down the street was you know the headquarters for the Q course. You know, okay. Special board for training groups right down the street. So didn't have to move or anything. Just yeah. change units. Yeah. So you get to the Q course. Tell me about that. Um, first, you start off in uh, uh, IUW. It's kind of learning the unconventional warfare. Yeah. Well, you're 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 basically watching, you know, the the graduating class. You're, yeah. You're watching the graduating class. You know, do their FTX. You know, Robin Sage. Yeah. You're kind of just being a role player. Right? You're, but you're sucking out there in the woods. Yeah. Like, firing blanks. Sucking out there in the woods and eating, eating turkeys you find. And yeah. <laughs> you're definitely sucking. It, it sucks. Gives you time to think you're about to go through the, all the shit that they're yeah, finishing yeah. up on right now. Yeah. Know? And, you know, these guys in the, you know, Robin Sage, I learned a lot when I was in IEW. These guys in Robert Sage are doing their Green Beret job now. Yeah. yeah. So their coach teaches the mentoring, you know, their, their partner force. We play the partner force. Um, you learn a lot, too. So I kind of learned a little bit just from IEW. Yeah. Yeah. So, as you're going through, I obviously we won't go in details of the Q course and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. you're going through Q course. At any moment during Q course, like, are you still just 100 percent determined? Didn't feel like you have moments where you're like, is this still for me? Or you're just at that point, you're like, this is it. I'm this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I wanted it. Yeah, I wanted it bad. You you had your eye on the prize. Yeah, and man, you meet a lot of dudes in there. Yeah, like minded dudes that yeah. want the same thing. You know, so they kind of kind of pump you up yeah to keep you in the fight yeah you know? i think the misconception of what people have of like sf guys and everything is they think it's just like meathead who's just strong and he's tough and you know vicious and everything but it's like you when you start to really realize and, and talk to people from that community that's kind of not it yeah, right? we're, all, we're still humans, usually man. the guys that get out quick you know yeah. they hit the gym all the time they're badass and everything but then they get put through some kind of mental toughness and then like, whoa, bro. <laughs> this is not, you know, Planet Fitness or whatever they're yeah, at. Like, it looks pretty on, yeah, it looks yeah. pretty on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's different, right? It's, it's mental rough. toughness. And I think going back on your history as a child and wh what you went through growing up, mm -hmm. like you said, it builds character, right? And I, I feel like a lot of people that I know personally from the SF community and people that I've been with, you know, 
doing different things, contracting stuff. Like you realize that a lot of these guys don't really come from like perfect backgrounds. Like no. they've had some, some fucked up trauma as kids yeah. and stuff. And some were even criminals, you know, I had a good family. <laughs> yeah. I had a good family and everything. And, and, you know, I, I love my family and everything, but we had some fucked up shit in our life, you know, like from, you know, the, the feds kicking down our door at one time. I was the first one to get out of the house without going to prison. You yeah. know, like it, you go through that rough time in life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that builds a better individual later on in life, especially if you do take the right path and yeah. try your best. Um, yeah. and, you know, I know you're now in law enforcement, but <clears throat> that's something I talk to people with a lot of these cops that come in that have had this perfect fairy tale life. They're usually the guys that are scared on the job because now you're putting this perfect little innocent guy to go after some of the baddest dudes on the planet. Yeah. And you're expecting him to somehow have this mental fortitude to say, I'm tougher than this guy and I'm going to take care of this guy. I'm going to get, I'm going to put him in cuffs. Yeah. Well, guess what? He's been doing this shit all the time. He's not yep. afraid of you. Yeah. So. And he can, he can sense that. Yeah, from exactly. You, you know, and, like and this guy hasn't done it. You anyway. might have gone to the gym your whole life and have like solid, you know, looking body, but. This guy was fighting. Yeah. This guy, this guy knows fighting. what toughness is all about. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah, man, I think that's um, something that's interesting to me because when you hear a lot of stories from SF guys and stuff like they have that, like you, you can almost tell when somebody was like, all right, I'm cut out for this. This is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm determined. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm goal oriented. I'm going to do it. Versus you have those guys that they just want to earn that tab. Yeah. They want to earn that pin. They want to look cool. Yeah. And then those are usually the guys that just, I'm done. Yeah. Right. You know, like turns out I don't want to be that cool after all. <laughs> I want to be cool without the work. Yeah. Right? That's too tough. Just... And did you see a lot of that while you're there? Um, people drop like flies. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'll see, even if they do make it to selection, Q cores gets even harder. You know yeah. what I mean? Those, they just start dropping. Yeah. If they, if they don't drop, you know, the cad drill. Did that ever like worry you? Kind of like, oh shit. <laughs> like, no. Getting your head or it just motivated you? Yeah. Yeah. I was never worried about yeah. getting kicked out or that's good. Or dropping. That's good. I mean, there were some, some parts and you, you definitely find Jesus out there during the, uh, yeah. during uh, Latin F. <laughs> well, turns out there is God. You know, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> After falling off your third mountain, you're just looking up. Like, oh, please help me get through this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So. <clears throat> For anybody that's like listening, that's maybe thinking of joining or, yeah. or you know, going SF or anything, do you have any like advice for them? That's what I tell my son all the time. You know, it's take care of your buddies, uh, train, don't stop. You know, there's be tons of times that you're going to want to quit, but you remember what you just always remember what the end prize is, you know, what's, yeah. your, what's, your, what's your goal. Yeah. You know, my, nice. my motivation was my family at the time and, uh, that's what kept me going. Yeah. You know, there were some tough times, but I found what kept me going, which was my ultimate goal. You know, I want the Green Beret, take care of my family. Yeah, so. Nice. So you go through a Q course, knock it out first try, right? Done. I, I don't know how that works because I, I, I know, like, there's SEALs that talk about how they, they've gone to, like, buds and stuff, and then they, yeah. they've done it, like, two or three times and stuff yeah. like that. But, like, if you get kicked out of Q courses, there's still opportunity to come back depending on how you got kicked out. You'll get recycled yeah. depending on what phase. Okay. You know, depending so, on what. Same it, concept. Yeah, yeah. You can get recycled, come back, restart that phase over. Okay. And there's a lot of different gates in there. There's, you know, there's line, line nav, uh, you know, SUT, language and all that. Yeah. But if you do, you do something bad, it's not just recycle. Start so, again. But so I what language did you get? There. I got Spanish. Spanish. And I don't know if it was like a a race thing or <laughs> they're like echo and com stating comms yeah. echo spanish you know? <laughs> yeah, spanish guy yeah. All right. he's brown enough for yeah. <laughs> so so you Good did spanish um you did you did the whole q course and everything you finish you become a green beret mm -hmm. how did that feel amazing man um you know, just the the pride you know in, in meeting all these dudes too you know it was Greatest feeling ever. You accomplished that goal. You know, it was probably one of the biggest goals I've ever accomplished. You know, yeah. Amazing feeling. Meet tons of awesome, other awesome dudes, you know. Was, yeah. Now you're part of a brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. Great so, feeling. So when you, when you, I, you know, and I've never been to a ceremony or anything, but like when you earned it and you became a Green Beret, was there anything special you guys did or like? Um, during the ceremony, it's just pretty standard. I mean. Formation, here you go. He did good. Yeah. We're not throwing her. <laughs> you're part, of, you're part of the thing now. You, <laughs> yeah. get, you don't get punched or drowned like yeah. all these random people say out there. Like, yeah, yeah. you fucking. Because the big thing yeah. is you get to 
finally don your yeah. beret you that's know, awesome. officially yeah and that's that's really like the pride sets in you know? yeah you see it in everyone else's face too it's actually a good feeling you know you know and i think i mean not the exact same thing but something similar is like i remember finishing marine corps boot camp right you finish the crucible and you come down and you, the whole time you're like man this wasn't even that bad and for some people it was, it was miserable like it was, yeah. it was hell on earth for them you know <laughs> but for me i was like i mean finishing the crucible I uh I broke three of my toes and I had stress fractures and stuff. I was fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Coming down that mountain hurt, man. But I was like, I am not Ugh. staying in boot camp for more weeks. I'm gonna push through this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when they give you that EGA, man, like that was that's when it really seeped in. Yeah, like, yeah. Fuck, I'm a marine. Like, I just earned that shit. I'm a marine now, you know. Yeah. And we during what we're in, and I'm sure you guys are the same way. <clears throat> you, it's a joke. We make fun of the guys that are all motivated. You're like, ah, look at that fucker. You know, yeah, like, yeah. making fun of him and stuff. You, you sit back and realize it, like, especially when you, in the current generation we live in, and this mm -hmm. is the way we see, I mean, we saw it this morning, right, having breakfast, all these young kids and stuff, you're like, God, what is happening to these guys? Yeah. And when you realize what you've accomplished, you're like, man, like, <clears throat> you sit there and think about it, like, 70% of probably today's population can't do half the shit we did, no. right? So, yeah, it's, it's special, and I can only imagine putting on a Green Beret, like, yeah. knowing that you're like, fuck, now I'm tip of the spear man i'm oh, up yeah. there yeah, yeah that's awesome definitely so, great feeling this episode is brought to you by mad gear company do you get the sense that you need to do more to prepare but you're unsure where to start are you ready to take charge of your preparedness grab a pencil and let your worries fade away by taking action today the mad gear company contingency planner will help provide a solid framework to your planning efforts the standard package comes with 36 Pages of planning materials, including a variety of guided fill-in-the-blank pages designed to help you organize your planning. Made exclusively with write-in-the-rain materials, the Contingency Planner is made to last. You get the quality and reliability of write-in-the-rain products, ensuring your planner survives the toughest environments. There's no better time than the present to do something to prepare, and there's no better product to get you started. The Mad Gear Company Contingency Planner is 100% designed and made in the USA with materials made in the USA. Check them out, guys. Mad Gear Company. You can check them out on madgearcompany.shop. These guys are awesome. They're veteran-owned. They have amazing contingency planners. Have really good knowledge that they put out on their socials regarding preparedness. Guys, no better time to start looking into these things. Not too long ago, big communication outage in the United States. Had another one recently that affected emergency services. Guys, start preparing. Check it out. Mad Gear Company. So you get your Green Beret. And what happens then? Because I know they're, they're, they're fast-tracking you. They're just, they're throwing, your I army actually, career started fast. I was actually done yeah. fast with the Q course, too. Um, yeah. so like I said, I had SEER school before that. I oh, remember. So you bypassed. Yeah, I bypassed that portion, too, you know, because I already had it. Yeah. Just give my paperwork. I remember. You were a good investment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, we are in that medium phase or that middle phase where you get, you get done with SUT. Next phase was a SEER school. Yeah. And then, you know, this this formation went over to the SEER school formation. I stayed, went straight to language, and they were like, what the hell's Kano doing out over there? Like, I got SEER school, man. <laughs> I already got that shit. I'm done, bro. <laughs> yeah, I ain't doing that shit again. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got your ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. So you finished that fast. <clears throat> And then after you finished Q course and kind of went through all that, mm. what next? Um, that's when you get prepped for your for your unit. So I went to Seventh Special Forces Group. Okay. Seventh Special Forces Group, located in Florida. Yeah. Um, so we made the move. Yeah. You know, packed up the family. It all went. You know, Makes sense. Send the Spanish guys down to Florida. Right. Yeah, yeah, send all Spanish dudes there. <laughs> so, real quick before you go any further on special or on seventh group, for you, what was the hardest thing in Q course? What was the one thing that you were like, all right, this this is a real test right here? Um, I want to say Robin Sage, man. Yeah, everything that you learn, you know, in the Q course, it all comes down to Robin Sage. You got to everything you learn. So, yeah. you know, SUT tactics, your language, um, your job, your MOS, yeah. so like. Everything is coming into play now, and the movements were weren't easy either. The, yeah, the movements were long, man. You stack a bunch of batteries and yeah, chow and extra food in yeah. your you know, in, in your ruck, and so you're now show you can be a warrior. Yeah, your your movements yeah. are long, man. Long, tired. Yeah, <laughs> so you got all these long movements. You know, there's stuff in between you got to do. And, you, know, you finally get to your G base, and man, I feel like 
months because it was just yeah. nothing but moving and moving through woods and the woods of North Carolina. You know? Yeah. That's pretty that rough. That was weather. fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. So, oh, you, yeah. You go ahead. Oh, well, actually, yeah, I miss, you know, so gra upon graduating, um, it was the top two of every MOS, top ranked in every yeah. MOS. Uh, they gave the opportunity to go to Halo school. So I was, uh, I was given a Halo slot. So here you go. You're Straight getting, out you're getting, getting Q course, man. I was like, this is awesome. Again, another class before you even yeah, get to your, before yeah, before I get to my unit. Yeah. Because you know, so. typically you do Halo school when you get to your unit, right? Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Back when, back in those days, back when yeah. I was in there, it was, it was more of an earned, you yeah. know, it was an earned course and it was a, now, now, right now they're giving it to everybody. Everyone gets Halo school. Yeah. Um, but back when I was doing it, there was. It was earned it was process. Yeah, 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 it was earned. Yeah. So the top two of every MOS got to go to Halo School. So I was fortunate to have it. Yeah. So you do Halo School, yeah. and then you go to seventh group. Then I hit my unit. So how did how was it when you got to seventh? Um, two thousand late two thousand thirteen, beginning fourteen, I think. Um, good get to seventh group, move the family, uh, in process. Um, that's when I link up with a couple of their buddies. You know, they had in summer group, they had this thing called uh, Green Platoon. Yeah. Which I think was genius. I mean, it was for all the new guys, all of these fresh out of the Q course. Um, basically doing a refresher on, you know, flat ranges, driving, you know, tons of stuff, tons of training before you actually go to your unit. So you're kind of prepped. Yeah. To go to your, to your team. You know, I mean, it was genius. I loved it. It was funny. You actually meet a lot of other, other people there too. I remember in processing, I see uh, it's gonna, you know, it's, he's gonna come into play later. I see, I see Brian relation, you know, <laughs> he was the cadre out in SUT in my Q course. Yeah, and I see him. We both in process at the same time. Oh wow! It's like, man, that's Brian. Yeah. Oh shit, he's, he's coming same unit. Yeah. Um, see him there, say hi, and all that. He remembers me and all that stuff. I was like, cool, man, awesome. Um, that's when I go to you know, Green Platoon. Do all the training there. I think the room tune was probably like three, four months long. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Because I haven't, in the Q course, I didn't shoot. I didn't shoot at all. Yeah. You oh, shoot shit. once in the Q oh, course. Wow. Yeah, you shoot once yeah. in the Q course. You call once, rest of the time you're learning stuff. Yeah, you're in the woods, man. Yeah. <laughs> you call once, you know, so I haven't shot in forever. And I, I think <clears throat> that's the important thing, too, right here. It's like a lot of people have this perception, like special forces, they shoot guns and they do all that. It's really like, you shoot I mean, when you even, get to your team. Yeah, like even in the Marine Corps, like everybody's like, oh, I bet they shoot rifles all day, every day. Like, no, that's, I wish. that's not. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> like that's not, that was for me the most peaceful time in boot camp because one, they don't yell at you. Like yeah. they, they kind of just let you do your thing. You go to the range and you learn how to shoot a rifle. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the, the uh, stuff in the military, people don't realize this. They, everybody sees the, with the movie show you, right? But yeah. it's a lot of training, a lot of classes, death by PowerPoint at times. Like it's just PowerPoints are sometimes worse than going outside and doing PT, man. Yeah. You're just in there like, oh my God, I'm dead. But Sleeping with your eyes open. Yeah, exactly. There's so much <laughs> stuff that comes to actually making what, what the perception of what these people see like on movies and shit, right? Yeah. So like, yeah, that's, that's, that's good you pointed that out because I'm sure people think like Q Corps are probably like shooting rifles all the time. These yeah. guys can... You know, the, the Bravos, the 18 yeah. Bravos, they, yeah. they had, a, they had a lot of yeah. uh, range time because yeah. that's part of their job. You know, they were Correct. the weapons guys. So yeah. They had a lot of range time. Yeah. I was an echo. Yeah. You're learning your job. Yeah. yeah. We didn't got range time. So, so you finished the green platoon deal, the training and everything. What yeah. happens then? Um, so that's ending, man, pretty much everyone's, you know, team, their ODAs were, you know, they were all deployed somewhere, you know, South America. Um, majority of them, second battalion was in Afghanistan. You know, yeah. a lot of them were, and a lot of us were going to second battalion. Yeah. Um, man, that's so why you start, you know, you graduate, you know, Safalg, and then they tell us, you know, what, what teams you're going to go to. You know, like, hey, you're going seven, ODA 7224, you're going to link up with them in Afghanistan. I'm like, all right, cool, man. No idea who my team is. They don't know who I am. I don't even think they know I'm coming. You don't even know when you're going <laughs> to Afghanistan. You, just, you know, you're going. It was, no, it was like, Two weeks after that, God, yeah, it was like two quick. weeks after that. Green Another team. fast track for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty quick, you know. Yeah. I, was, I was I was pumped up, man. That's what I'm here for. You know? Yeah, I was, I was excited. Trained for it all this time. Now yeah, it's time yeah. to put it into work, right? Yeah, I was excited for it. You know, prep the family again. You're like, hey, I'm leaving. Yeah, deployment. No idea where I'm yeah. going. <laughs> so, so you you find out you're going to Afghanistan. You 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 leave your family. You got your son at the time. How old mm. is your son at this time? Man, seven maybe. Seven. Seven years old. Yeah. Little guy. Yeah, little, little dude. So you you say, all right, going to Afghanistan, 
you leave. Yeah. How does it go? Where does it start? Um, go to um. Uh, what else? Go link up with in Kandahar. Go straight to Kandahar. Mm -hmm. Um, the first thing I got to do is you know, in process, you know, you go to Afghanistan, it's a lot of in process. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, link with all, you know, the, everyone's there trying to guide you where to go. You know what I mean? I had to do some training out there as well, too. It took a little long process yeah. as well. Kind of stuck doing that. So I didn't get to see my team yet. You know, yeah. So it was stuck in Kandahar. Um, but then we, that's when I finally got to, you know, a couple months down the road. Yeah. Like, all right, you're going to link up with your team now. They're in Shawalikot. I was like, cool, man. So I think that's when they knew I was finally, hey, we got a new Echo coming yeah. on the team. Be before we get into that, what was it like getting off the bird in Kandahar? Oh, what man. Was, was your, in your initial, like, oh, shit, I'm here. All right, this is war, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was hot. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. Didn't really hit me. Yeah. You know, it wasn't really. It's kind of another Nothing really place. going on. Like, yeah. it was just lying. And I was like, man, I yeah. thought there was going to be a war. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Kandahar is huge, man. It's like yeah, it's like its own city. It was like, well, I mean, who knows what it's like now, right? But yeah, who, yeah, who fucking terrible. Like. But yeah, I mean, it, like, safe. You know, yeah. it was right there was safe. We don't have flight line, and it, yeah, nothing was really yeah going down. But you can hear sometimes, you know, mortars being shot in the distance, like yeah. far, far out. Yeah. So you so okay, you leave Kandahar and then you go to your team. Yeah, right. I'm going to my OD, yeah. How does that go? Um. So it was a Halo team. Yeah. So I was fortunate to go on a Halo team because back then, too, the only way to get a Halo team is if you're a seasoned guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was fortunate enough. I already had Halo school. I end up going to a Halo team, 7224. Get to this team, and everyone's a fucking seasoned <laughs> operator killing uh -oh. motherfucker, yeah. dude. So I'm just this young dude. No idea what I'm doing. Fresh Green Beret. You know, everyone's this seasoned guy. You know? And then... The guy, one of the guys in the team, Brian Relation, one of my, one of my cadre out in the Q, <coughs> the Q course, you know, the guy I linked up with when I saw him in process and everything, he ends up being on the team. I'm like, whoa, fucking Brian Relation's here, yeah. Crazy. Um, team sergeant was George Barra. He was a little solid team sergeant, a little, little rough, but <laughs> yeah. like I said, everyone's a seasoned guy, you know what I mean? Everyone's a seasoned guy is pretty, it was pretty awesome. I, mean, I learned a lot just from that yeah deployment yeah um how these guys operated you know, i didn't know what yeah i was doing you know so <laughs> i mean i guess that's a good thing right you yeah. showed up to a group of seasoned dudes yeah in a, in that environment and now yeah. you're learning from the best yeah right? and then, you know my senior echo ricky uh he was probably one of the best echoes i've ever seen yeah yeah so i learned a lot from him my job i learned a lot from my job in school but just yeah. learning from him you know i learned a lot yeah he taught me a lot it's awesome so i'm pretty grateful to have him i had a, I had a solid team that was so what was your first deployment like what all right like, actually when when you finally got there when did you finally have your first moment like all right this is fucking war <laughs> like yeah this is no longer q course this is no longer training <laughs> Yeah, this is in uh the kid raising his hand saying I want to go to airborne school or any of that stuff. This is now, oh shit, this is yeah. war. Um, so I'm I'm like I said I'm a young guy on the team. I don't know what I'm doing, but you know a lot. I had a lot of leadership from from Brian. He would tell me, you know, you're the youngest, one of the youngest guys on the team. Um, we don't need you to we don't need you to think. All right, we just need you to be lethal, be as lethal as you can. You're here to yeah. You're here to be lethal. That's yeah. it. Don't think, don't do anything. Just do your job. Be lethal as you can, which is probably one of the greatest things that anyone's ever told me. You know? Yeah, and that's all I did. I just soaked in every knowledge that I can get from each guy, each M every MOS. Don't try know? to be perfect at all the other stuff. Just no. fuck shit up. Yeah, yeah, I'm not here to. I, I'm not here to do it. I'm just. <laughs> I'm lethal. Just yeah. gonna be lethal. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Um, and all I really knew was Q course training. You know? Yeah. So, it was a pretty good story there. We we're. We're one of the valleys out there. I forgot the name of the valley. I think it was, I don't know if these guys listen to Rumble in the Jungles, what we called it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty awesome. But they, we would go down there and crush it, you know, crush it all the fucking time. Had the birds come in. Our cat, Rob, he was, he was an animal major now, but he was, he was an animal, man. He was awesome. Um, and then uh, 
where we get shot at, you know, we're, we're hanging rounds, dropping mortars. We take some rounds hitting the ground. I remember just looking, just watching all these rounds hit the ground. And what do I learn in the Q course, you know, you know, seat cover, get down, return fire. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. You know, I yeah. get on the ground, seat cover, start laying down some fire. You know? Yeah. And all these DCs and dudes are like, what are you doing down there, man? <laughs> what are you doing down there? <laughs> like, what, what? So they're just getting shot. They don't care. Yeah. You know, they're used yeah. to that yeah. shit. You know, so I'm like, all right, well, my bad. <laughs> like, shit, that's what I was. And they're taught, laughing man. at me. They're like, "You digging a hole down there?" You know? Yeah. <laughs> it was Tim. Tim Peterson was giving me the most shit. He was like, "Man, you digging a hole down there?" You're being half lethal. Right I don't know, man. man. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so they're returning fire just like normal. Like, you yeah. saw it daily. You know, so, you know, because I got in deployment late. So yeah, it was like their daily thing. You know? They're already there. Yeah. So. So you're in this valley doing all this stuff. Yeah. When was like your, the first one where you're like, all right, this is like, like I know you got in firefights and everything already. Yeah, yeah. But there's, there's always, you know, typically that one that's like, yeah. all right, oh shit. Uh, it was probably more towards the end. Um, started doing bigger missions with, you know, it's still on 7224, the first deployment. And um, that's when I guess it started getting real. You know, we started getting ourselves closer and closer to you. Taliban, you know, we're fighting Taliban, and that's when you actually start seeing who we fucking shot, who we, yeah. who's, who's there, you know, like, damn, we're doing work out here, you know? Yeah. It was, it was almost daily. Every time we went out daily, it was yeah. firefights, you shit. know? Yeah. Yeah. So, but all, the whole time was learning, you know, was yeah. learning how to be a Green Beret. So, so we talked about a little bit of a, like, before the podcast, we talked about the story, um, the female, was that your first deployment, or was that your... That was the second. Second. Okay, so we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, I don't know why I was thinking it was the first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, so you, you get through your first deployment. Getting to firefights daily. Kind of now starting to feel that rhythm. Yeah. And you're like, all right, I'm a Green Beret. I'm learning from these dudes. Yeah. I'm, I'm being lethal. I'm yeah. doing my job. Shut the fuck up. Baby. Yeah, exactly. So you finish up your deployment. What goes down from there? How does that? Um, we, we rip out. I think we close down Shawali Cot. I mean, was no longer going to be a base there out there anymore. Yeah. And I remember, uh, so we're ripping out of there. You know, we're, we're handing it over to, you know, to our partner forces. It's yeah. going to be their base now. We're watching in the drone cameras. You know, we load up all our trucks, and we left a lot of shit over there. Computers and, you know, a lot of shit was left behind over there. Wow. But it was meant for the partner force. You yeah. Know, they're they're going to use the tents, generators. Yeah. A lot of shit, you know. I remember um, we're driving out of there. We're watching the drone feed over, and, they, man, these guys just, like Americans are gone, they just jump the walls. They're just ripping shit out, keeping it. You know, like fuck. They just—it's their base now, but yeah. they act like <laughs> it wasn't theirs. And I just started ripping things apart. You're know, like, why? It's yours. Take it. You know, you don't have yeah. To, you're stealing. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it took over at that point. The the Afghans or yeah, the Afghans. Yeah. Uh, A and A. We ended up giving it to A and A. A and A. So like half Taliban, half. <laughs> Might half as well guys. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might so, as well be, yeah. Just ramsack it through your shit. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, we want this stuff. Yeah. So you guys you guys get out of there. Yeah. And then how is it coming home? Um, it's pretty normal to me. It wasn't man, first deployment. Yeah. It wasn't even I it wasn't even a full deployment because I went halfway in and over I think it was two months into deployment, that's when I showed up, you know. Um so I didn't do a complete two or full deployment. Yeah. Pretty easy, fun, you know, learning learning my way around the team and all that, learning new things and Definitely treat it like the uh, the new guy. Yeah. yeah, take the fucking trash out. Yeah, Fuck. <laughs> restock these beers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you when you get home, how how are you? Like at this point, it sounds like you're mentally right on, right? Yeah, you're 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 still doing good. Yeah, nothing is really fucking with you. Like you're you're feeling good. Oh yeah, feeling lethal. Oh yeah. How's everything with your family? Uh, pretty good. I mean, I maybe it was uh, me just not noticing. I don't know if my you know, my wife at the time was not, didn't enjoy it, but yeah. it seemed like she did. We're in Florida. <clears throat> yeah. She was working her way around, you know, getting a job and all that. So, um, and at this point, I mean, you feel like everything's fine. Everything's yeah. going good. Yeah. How long till you go on the second? Uh, I want to say it was like eight months. Back at it. Yeah. Right back at it. Yeah. You know, we go straight to PMT, permission training and all that. How'd your son take it? Um, he was, he was still too young. Yeah. He knew it was a green beret, but yeah. 
You didn't really kinda, soak it in. Yeah. You know, he just, oh, dad's in the army. He's got to do shit. Some yeah. shit, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he was okay with you going yeah, the yeah. second time or anything. Yeah. So you get ready for the second time. Yeah. Do your workup, right? Um, how long was your workup for? Uh, I guess I think like eight months by, okay. you know, our next turnaround for deployment. Yeah. You know? So, we, but in, in that meantime, we're doing all this training, you know. we're Getting gonna, ready, yeah. <clears throat> we're doing, you know. Archangel, we're doing pre-mission training, a lot of flat ranges, motor ranges, and all that. Just yeah. getting, getting prepped. You know so, I mean? you go to your second one. Now you've got, you know, you've been on the team a little longer. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you got your first one where you were just told, be lethal, do your job. Yeah. How do you feel this second time going? Um, now that you kind of already know what you're going to yeah. expect. It's a little bit more confident <clears throat> this time, but still a new guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had, a, we had a leadership changeover. Got a new uh, team sergeant. He did a little things a little different, um, but still he was just as much as killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, same with our, still had the same cap. He was a solid dude. A um, little more open, open reins this time, you know. Uh, uh, so we ended up going to Cot Valley a lot. You know, and this is like the, the, the shift change of like Taliban slowly turning into, you know, an ISIS fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I think that's something, and I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah, yeah. that's something people don't understand that in Afghanistan, it wasn't just fighting the Taliban the whole yeah, time. Yeah. Like you had other organizations who were in Afghanistan yeah. causing trouble. And yeah. during this time frame, ISIS was causing some, you know, some trouble to yeah. where they weren't teamed up with the Taliban. No. They were enemies too. They were enemies too. Yeah. For sure. So. Again, we're, now we're on your second deployment, kind of yeah. getting into that ISIS phase. So yeah. how's this going? It's slowly getting into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We didn't, we didn't start getting the intel until probably like later on down the deployment. You yeah. Know? So we're still finding Taliban run-ins with ISIS. You know what I mean? Um, we ended up going to Cop Valley, Crazy Valley. I mean, there was a mountain, you know, <coughs> just south of it. But all the, the snow would run down and it would create water in this valley. This valley was gorgeous, green. You know what I mean? The, the rocks up top were dry as hell. But this valley was, you know, the snow would make this, this green valley. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of the people populated there. It was, you know, a lot of housing there. We're not the huts and stuff, you know. A lot of their homes were there. A lot of people lived in this valley. Yeah. You know? But obviously we had intel, you know, ISIS was down there. We're going we're, we're gonna to go check it out. You know what I mean? Um, if you get set up there, and this is, and there was a road, a single road coming, swivels down. You know what I mean? One road, huge cliffs, you know, either side. We're on, we, we staged our truck on one of the top of the cliffs. Um, there was probably more, one other truck on the cliff, and then the road went down. That's when we had another, you know, our, one of our assault teams that went down. Uh, Tim Peterson goes down there. Uh, he's, he's got his whole little group up there, too. Um, that's where he got shot as well. So he gets shot, takes a round of the shoulder, medevaced out. You know, it was, it was a lot of fighting. You know, it was all day of fighting. That's when they're there. I guess there's some sort of ambush kicks off on everybody. You know? Yeah. Um, but I'm on I'm on top. You know, trucks with the 240. You know, just scanning, shooting. Man, there was fire coming everywhere, everywhere. Sniper fire. Couldn't really tell where it was because you know it's down the valley. You're like, man, there's someone's here shooting at us, and a lot, a lot of rounds are coming out. Couldn't really tell, so you kind of just. Shooting that word, so keep coming from, yeah. coming from, you know. Doug, Doug Armstrong, who was a sniper with the mortar, you know, he was, yeah, he had the 60. He was, he was laying some sniper rounds down in the valley, you know. He was, yeah. I'd call it out, it's kind of like F one for him, yeah, call out a window, it's like, yeah, I think it might be coming out that window, and then uh, put, boop. A, put a round on the forehead, right on the fucking window, like, damn, yeah. Doug, how'd you do that? <laughs> How'd you do that? Uh, sniper man, sniper with the with the mortar. I mean, that all probably comes down from Brian. That he's the genius behind all that, you know, mortar and stuff. But we're taking rounds, you know, all, you know, all day. It's probably like six hours, six seven hours. I'm up there with uh, Dave Martin's. He's on the Mark 19. I'm on the 240 in the back. I'm uh, just kind of scanning, looking around. But I remember just getting this this rounds just pinging by my head all damn day. It was just and it was getting closer and closer. It's like this dude was. Getting closer. Down, yeah. I don't know what, yeah, what kind of rifle he was using, but it wasn't good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but he was hitting like the antennas on the, the truck. And like, God damn it, dude. Motherfucker's going to hit me. Put my helmet on. <laughs> I better put my fucking helmet on. Yeah. 
put my helmet on, and then all day he just kept shooting. Dave Martin's in the back laughing at me. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's fucking guys trying to shoot you, man. Fuck, yeah. Um, so that's when um, it was all day. But I remember all day I see this woman. She's just dusting her rug. All, it was like all day for like six hours. I really didn't think about it. Yeah, like those memes, right? That people are paying attention to some crazy stuff going down the street. They're like sweeping, you know, nothing. sweeping the dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. So you think just, it's just that's what she's doing? Yeah, she's, I mean, I, just a civilian. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not yeah. gonna bother you. Know, but I would shoot. I'm gonna shoot the 240. Stop. Go around her. Shoot, shoot, shoot. You know, wouldn't hit her. And then you know, it turns to be like six hours into this, like this lady's still dusting her fucking rug. And there's still a sniper out there. Uh, look real close, and then that's when I see this dude underneath her legs, you know, pointing a fucking rifle. I was like, fuck, I found the fucking sniper. There he is. Yeah. Found the fucking sniper, man. Like, shit. I think I told Dave, too. I was like, dude, I found that dude. He's that lady. Like, fucking <laughs> handle it, yeah. Yeah. So I, said, I had no choice but to fucking mow this lady down with 240 and the sniper, yeah. She was part of a team. You know what I mean? Yeah. This guy was shooting at us all day. She was helping. Walking in that sniper rounds, yeah. So, so that was like one of the biggest ones where I'm like, wow, shit, we're at fucking war, you know? This is yeah. fucking crazy, you know? Yeah. You just, you just fucking shot a lady. Right? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, back, I mean, like even just now, you're not thinking like, oh, I'm going to go mow some lady down, you nah. know? It's, yeah. She yeah. was part of a team, man. Yeah. She, was, she was helping she, him. She was helping him out. It's just yeah. crazy. You don't think about that, you know? It's like. The hell is she dusting that rug for? <laughs> One I think for listeners to understand is some of these people in the Middle East, they're so accustomed to war that, I mean, because I'm sure somebody's going to listen to this and say, well, why would you think that this lady dusting this rug is completely fine? But what people that maybe have never been there or understand is these people will just continue life as some of these battles are going on, yeah. right? Like They're just kind of like, well, they're fucking at it again, you know, like whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, I can totally understand where you're like, all right, shit, I don't want to hit the, the rug lady. And then yeah, yeah. finally, like, let me look at her real quick. I was avoiding her all day. Yeah. 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 Could have probably ended it a lot sooner. Exactly. You looked at her, right? <laughs> exactly. So, after you guys take out that, you take out that sniper <clears throat> and the lady, did you guys continue that firefight? Was it, or is that, that, was that one of the kind of like, no, it slow, kept going. Kept I mean, there was going. multiple. Wow. There was multiple. It's just, yeah. it's just going off, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 It was all over the place. So did you did you have at any moment during that time where like fuck, I just shot a lady? No. I was tired of getting shot at. Yeah. Man, it was nonstop all day. Like, man, I'm getting getting fucking sick of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty happy I found it, but it, it still kept going. I think uh right before we ripped out of there, they might have grabbed everyone in the in the valley down there and just started shooting more rounds. Yeah. It got even worse. You know, like, I guess we're ripping out of here, you know. Like. <laughs> and at this time, it was ISIS fighters, right? Yeah. No longer, not, well, at the time, not Taliban. It was, it was ISIS fighting you guys. Yeah. So this firefight goes on for many more hours. You, you guys do your thing. It sounds like you guys are just getting in firefights every damn day, right? Yeah. Um, and how does this second deployment keep going and panning out for you after this? Um, this is the time uh, we really didn't, we weren't living out. And shit, you know what I mean? We'd, we'd go back to J Bed. We yeah. were located in J Bed, Jalalabad. And uh, so we'd go back, eat Jack Waits, <laughs> go back out on another mission. Yeah. It was like that with everything. Yeah. You know, we, we weren't weren't allowed to go out and live out there. Yeah. You know, we'd be back in the big base, plan everything. You know? So you kind of come out of the box for a little bit and go back into the wire. And yeah. Just, all right. Yeah. So night missions we do every now and then. So did you guys ever have, because I know during like the Obama administration, they were pushing for trying not to do stuff at night and stuff, which is really was if you ask me. It really was, man. It was a, there was a lot of restrictions that we couldn't do. Yeah. It, honestly, these restrictions would get people killed as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because you've obviously got to experience this. And a lot of people here have this mentality of like, especially now, nowadays generation has this mentality like that these rules are going to be followed by both parties and like while well, you're being restricted on what you can and can't do mm -hmm. you have an enemy who gives zero fucks and mm -hmm. they're just trying to kill you yeah they're not they don't care if it's dark daylight whatever they're not gonna you know i'm, I'm sure there's no such thing as let me put the white flag up and quit and they have yeah. this con prison camp and 
keep you there. Like those dudes are gonna kill you. Yeah, they, they want, want you dead. They want you dead. They want you dead. Yeah. So you you do your second deployment, you're there. That you obviously had that big moment that day with the the firefight where you had the sniper, the lady. Do you have any other moments in that second deployment where you're like, oh shit? Um it was it was a lot, man. You we'd come across a lot of different shit that I hate to call it normal firefights, but <laughs> Yeah. It was it was almost daily. Every time we went out, it was it was something big. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. Let's go. Okay, back bus, and clear! Target. That was really low. Ooh. That was real low. Let's get some more though. And this whole time to give a perception to people is you're also working with Afghans. Yeah. You're working with Afghan nationals who are fighting for their country against terrorism. Yeah. Because I think I mean you talked about this yesterday and today. Mm -hmm. We have a community currently that they believe that these terrorist organizations are the people of this country, mm -hmm. are the people that represent this country. And it's really not. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's Muslim people out there that don't like it either. They they want the same thing we want. We want yeah. these guys dead. Yeah. Right. They're fighting for their country, man. Yeah. Which I really, really respected that from them. Yeah. You know, they they're fighting for their country. They want it back. You know, they want to live, you know, live free off the, off the Taliban. You know? Yeah. And I really, really respected that from them. So when you like, and I'm not, I'm not going to skip all the way forward, but going into the Afghan withdrawal, when you saw that happen and you saw how we left a lot of those people that were fighting alongside us Americans yeah. and we left them out there yeah. and you know, what's going to happen to them. Yeah. How did that make you feel? It's tragic, man. Like you immediately thought like we got to do something like yeah. you feel kind of lost, man. Cause there's really nothing. I, I can't just fly out anymore and go grab them. Yeah. yeah. These guys definitely do deserve to come here, you know, as immigrants, yeah. you know what I mean? There's, I can, there's a lot of people that are immigrants that are not even real immigrants, man. Like, they don't deserve to be here. These guys did. They and, fought. And that's another interesting topic we kind of get into right now, right, is, you know, we have this whole immigration thing going on in the United States. Mm -hmm. But when we had thousands and thousands of Afghans who needed our support and have supported us for the last 20 years. And then we turned our back. We just back. left them. Yeah. We left them, you know. Yeah. And, and here down the road, a couple hours from here from Houston, you got people just coming in by the boatload, man. Yeah. Just getting, just jumping that fence and getting over here. Yeah. And, and I, I think, mean, we probably not even making them jump the fence anymore. We're opening it for them. Oh, yeah. Come Wide on open. And, Wide and, open. And, free and, child, free. Exactly. Gift cards, whatever they get nowadays. And, and in, these, in these group of individuals, you have some of the guys that were, you know, trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. right? You got groups, guys like Hamas. Yeah. You got, you know, because of course, everybody has these perceptions that Hamas and all these guys are, are government entities and they're protecting the people of, you know, Palestine. Mm -hmm. But these guys are terrorists, man. They yeah. want to kill you. They're terrorists. Yeah. Most, most things that most supporters that are supporting them here in the United States today, they would probably get killed if they go over there with the beliefs that they have here. Yeah. Right. They're like, I don't care if you support me back home. Yeah. You're dead to me. Done. Yeah. So, and, and not that I want to sidetrack on that, but I, that's the importance I want to show people is, you know, there, there's two sides to this whole thing, right? Everybody has this perception, but most of these people that have that perception have never done anything in their life other than read a book yeah. or think that they've read a book that has been only leading to one direction. Yeah. There's two directions on this road, right? And you should see both before you make your assumptions. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I didn't want to go on a big rant about that, but, well, it, you know, that was important to me because you're telling me these stories and you know i know that there was it wasn't just americans fighting you know people in afghanistan there was people from afghanistan locals fighting with you fighting to, other afghans to but save their Taliban. country from yeah. terrorism right yeah. you know um yeah so your second deployment goes down get some crazy firefights it's a daily thing you mowed down a lady on this this deployment you mm -hmm. killed a sniper who was trying to kill you all day and <laughs> your second deployment happens how's what what starts to happen towards the end of that deployment? <clears throat> um, so was JBAD. I mean, I, I think, man, it left a really uh, impact, I guess, on my head too. Like these people obviously needed needed help. You know, I think JBAD was kind of fell in love with it. You know, I felt like my second home. You know, what I mean, like I had this awesome ODA, did a lot of work there, and I felt like that was the place that needed help. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't really, didn't really have that feeling to Shivali Thai. Uh, but j Bad felt like could, we need to stay longer. <laughs> yeah. We need to stay longer, but obviously that can't happen. Yeah. So we rip out. Uh, just count the days, you know, like, man, ripping out of there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go back, back to the States, you know. Uh, we have another, you know, another leadership changeover and all that. Di- our missions were changing, you know what I mean? We ended, up, we ended up losing guys, you know, they're they're off doing bigger, better things, you know. Uh, team's kind of downsizing. All the, you know, all the, all the uh, seasoned guys were leaving. You know, they're going, yeah. they're going bigger, better places. Uh, Brian, he ends up taking a team. He gets his, he gets his E8. He ends up taking a team in uh, ACO, ODA seven two one four. So he's gone. We lose our senior Bravo. I'm on. The, I'm still on seven two two four. Um, and then that's when you uh, things were going down. A lot of things were going down. We're supposed to go to Mexico and do uh, do some training there. Uh, so we're kind of prepping for that. You know, um, Brian ends up calling me up. I guess he needed a needed an echo on his team. You know, so he calls me up. He's like, "Hey, I need an echo on this team, man. You want to come over? We're going right back to JBAD. I'm like, oh, shit. Unfinished business there, huh? Fuck, yeah. yeah. Get me on your team, man. I'll go with you. And this was, like, happening immediately. You know, we were, it was coming quick. He's yeah. like, dude, we're, next week we're going to Archangel. Next week after that we're going to PMT. And then we're deploying. It was exactly six months. I had a six-month break, but it was all training, you know, between those yeah. six months. So from that deployment to the next, it was, like, six months, man. <laughs> right back to JBAD. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost like you never really left. No. Just took a I was, quick break. I was still fucking packed from the last trip. <laughs> Go get some chow and a good shower. Go right back at <laughs> it. Huh? Right back in it, man. Yeah. So how, so now now it's your third deployment. Mm. You're no longer really truly the new guy. I mean, you might still be new, maybe, depending on how many more new guys came in. But yeah. now you got two under your belt. You've got you got some time under your belt. Yeah. You're now being requested. To go to another team, yeah. obviously that shows that you weren't terrible at what you did, right? When yeah. somebody's actually asking for you to come to their team, so how does the third one go? When when you get there, what's where's your mindset at here? Like, are you still, you know, post first one where you're like, yeah, I'm good, I'm ready to go, like let's just fucking do this. But now it almost seems like you have some kind of personal, you know, interest over there too. Yeah, you, really like did. you said, you didn't want to leave the first time or the yeah. second time, yeah. but now you're going back. Yeah. So how are you this time? Man, definitely motivated. Um, had more, more knowledge of the area. Yeah, you know? definitely excited to go back. I really wanted to go back. Yeah, you know? I was lucky to get that opportunity. And then, um, but the ODA that the new ODA went on it was kind of a young team. I'm not saying they were all. Most of them have been in the army for a long time, but the most recent deployments was me and Brian. You know, me and Brian, we went to. We just we just got back from JBAD. You know, right back from Nangahar. You know, we were just there. Yeah, so got to bring a little bit of knowledge to the team. You know, we already knew what was out there. Um, we can tell them basically don't even need an Advon. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were just, we just left there. So we know, kind of know what's going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't need to hear it, man. Yeah. I'm ready to go right back to where I left off. Yeah. And Rich is pretty rare, man. I haven't heard a lot of dudes. There probably is dudes out there that have gone back to the same place they just deployed from. You know, yeah. so we we're redeploying right back where we just came from. Yeah, I want to say it's rare, but I don't. I don't hear a lot of dudes saying that. But yeah, yeah it's pretty it's, awesome. Yeah, man. it's usually specific types yeah, of jobs and stuff. In the, your next deployment is somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going right back into it. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get into the third. We'll get into the third. We'll go. I know that's the one where things started to change a little bit for you. Mm. This episode is brought to you by Grind Ops Coffee Company. Established in 2021, Grind Ops Coffee Company offers handcrafted fluid bed roasted coffee to suit any tactical, outdoor, and or hectic lifestyle. It was founded on the principles of grit, grind, and perseverance. Their mission is to fuel your mindset for any op. Serving as a canine handler with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, founder Aaron Mesa drank coffee as a staple that fueled his day. As a natural-born tinker, he began experimenting with different roasting methods and flavor profiles. After lots of trial and error, Aaron had some damn good coffee. Aaron's dedication to Grind Ops Coffee Company mirrors the commitments he demonstrated to his country. 
Grind Ops Coffee Company helps support military and first responder nonprofit organizations. Law enforcement officer owned and operated Grind Ops Coffee Company. Go check them out today. GrindOpsCoffeeCo.com. Link will be in description. Check them out today. So third deployment is coming. You got selected to be part of your buds team. You're ready to go. You're still focused from the last one. You had unfinished business. You didn't want to leave. Now you're going right back to the exact same spot you left, but this time it's different. You're going to live there. You're going to, you're going to go right into the valley where you just probably obliterated the last time, and now you're, you're right there, neck and neck, going after ISIS. Yeah. You're there, same spot. You, you just left this place a couple months back, and you're right there again. Yeah. How's this going now? So, uh, you know, I get to the new team, uh, 7214. Um, at this point, you know, Brian brought me over, he, but I'm more in more of a leadership role now. You know, I've been there. I did most of the training already. Brian knows how I, how I work. Like I said, some of the team was young, you know, so they needed a little bit of, you know, coaching and teaching as well too. How are we going to do this deployment? You know, cause the majority of them haven't deployed yet. Um, so then, you know, we're going right back to the same spot, same place, different mission now. You know, the authorities changed. Now it's RSM. Uh, uh, RSM changes everything up. So it's not no longer OEF. You know, so everything changed. Um, do all the whole train up. PMT was great. Um, that's when I got to work with, uh, you know, Ryan Hendrickson a lot too. He was kind of coaching us, you know, IED lanes and all stuff like that. I guess a master at that, huh? Oh yeah, he's, he's pretty good. I mean, he's still working at it. Now. He's still he's, doing it over in Ukraine. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. great dude. Yeah, yeah, solid guy. Um, so we get deployed. Pretty, we're pretty excited. Young guys, everyone, you know, solid team. His, his team is awesome, man. This is, you know, I came from one team, seven two two four, created a brotherhood there with them. They all still call me to this day. You know, they made really great friends with them. Um, go to this new team. You know, I was fortunate again to have this another amazing team. Um, the cap, Captain Brandon Lewis at the time, he's major now, but he was, you know, Brandon Lewis, awesome, awesome officer. He was for the guys, you know. Um, yeah. And that's when I had um, our, you know, warrant officer too. He came in later on before we, you know, before we deployed. Uh, Nate Smith, great friends to this day. You know, we call each other up and smart guy. I always had to get. You know, a lot yeah. of mentoring from him to this day, you know, yeah, good. kind of need his guidance. So I met a lot of great people on this ODA. And I, right now I still live with, you know, Jake. He's out there in Scottsdale with me now. Yeah. Um, so we get deployed. We're going to, you know, right back to, you know, JBAD. Well, first we touch down in Bagram. As soon as we touch down in Bagram, um, we get, you know, we get reports like, hey, you guys need a four-man team. Four, are you going to go and take over this compound? This is as soon as we get boots on ground. C-130 lands, we're, we're in processing through there, and that's when we get the call. You know, Surprise. Bro, yeah. Four-man team, you guys need to get to um, MSS Diablo. Welcome back, fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And MSS Diablo is, was kind of built up. You know, it was an old ISIS compound. Uh, I think National Guard there was at the time. They, they took it over, but it was, you know, you know, it was just, it recently got bombed. You know yeah. What I mean? So four man team, we all went. You know, it's boots on ground, packed everything up. Didn't even have time to like make my bed, man. <laughs> so um, we all jump in. You know, a Chinook, pack up, ready to go. Everyone's we got ammo, chow, whatever, whatever's going to keep us alive until those days. Finally land. You know, under under night. In our nods and all that, um, link up, and we we found this found the compound we're supposed to be at, and it's three and a half walls. It's not even a complete compound. <laughs> Shit, dangerous as hell, man. Yeah, and all you do is just hear from you know the National Guard was bombing the hell out of Momon Valley, right next door to us, and you just hear it all all night. It's just bombing and bombing and bombing. Pretty crazy, you know. So, but when we took over this compound, kind of like. Slapped hands. They took the, the two guys that were down on the ground there, like secured the area. They took off the Chinook. Nice. We were there now, so we're doing stand two all, you know, 
pretty much all night and the rest of the day because it was three and a half walls. You know, they could easily get yeah. overran. You know, so we had it pull security on this compound all night. Yeah. And uh, we're going in there. It's just ISIS riding. There's ISIS flag and shit inside there still. And it was wrecked because we just got done bombing it. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy, man. But this is the same valley that we just left in 16. Yeah. We just left. Now, this is the valley that we just bombed as well. And now we're living in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was. You're not going back to yeah. to the, the big spot and going yeah. lifting weights and stuff. You're now staying there. We're staying right here in this spot. We ain't going over. Yeah. So the mission was, you know, ISIS. Um, we're going to create white space. That's basically what we're doing. We're just pretty much pu pushing them back. Pushing them back. So uh, um, they're not coming to us. You know. I think that's where the fights started to change. You know, the deployment started to change is where back in the day, um, a lot of ODAs were standing and fighting. You know, they basically playing defense. Yeah. Not put, creating white space. Yeah. Playing defense at a compound. You know, that's all they basically did was just protect their compound. Yeah. You know, so this is where authorities changed a little bit. Now ODAs are are pushing now we're playing offense yeah you know, now we're able to go out there and fuck knocking it. on their door now yeah yeah now we're yeah. kicking in doors and crushing them in their own land you know so that's where you know things started to get real yeah you know what i mean so this is no longer first and second where you're stay lethal you're you're, you're now you know to stay lethal but now you got a different mindset you're yeah. you're a little bit more savvy with the land yeah you got personal personal interest there mm -hmm. you know you've already done some some pretty big stuff so you guys take this compound, well, three three walls. Three walls. You take right? it. You, you you pull security. You do your thing. What happens after that? <laughs> so we we're, we're down there, as, you know, as an ODA, we have a we have a solid uplift. Uh, uplift is our bunch of uh, infantry guys. They're with us. They're basically yeah. there to drive the trucks, shoot the guns, you know, fifty cal, Mark nineteen, yeah. uh, run the mortar systems and all that. Yeah. Um, a lot of missions that we had, we come, we, you know, we we came up with our own missions basically. Yeah. We're pushing forward. We'd always get intel. They're here, or there, and it was it was daily, daily ambushes. We we get into firefights daily. A couple of times we had to stay back because a lot of guys got sick, um, so we stayed back at Diablo. Um, we ended up creating another base out at you know just right across you know where the the huge cut was, the huge cliff. Another base up there, MSS uh, Mad Dog. So I'm pretty sure you, as a Marine, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> General Mad Dog. So yeah. he was named after Mad Dog, you know. Um, he's our current day legend. Yeah, yeah he's still. Yeah, he, he had Chesty back in the day. Now he got Mad Dog. We look oh, up to yeah, him. Yeah. Back in the day, it was Mad Dog, you know. Um, this, man, this deployment was, you know, it was always someone getting shot. You know, someone was always getting shot. There was, I don't remember the name of the valley we were going to, but we ended up going, it was like beginning of it, man, it firefight. We weren't even at our location where we were going to go, you know, our, our final, um, it was just a firefight, bam. Finally get to where we're going to go. Um, one of the stories there, we had Jay and uh, James Hall. We're coming down this valley. Um we're taking sniper fire all over the place. And we saw, but we had a bunch of high Mars come down. Yeah. It's like the hand of God coming down. High yeah. Mars coming. We're going up this valley, bringing all our trucks because our, our, you know, our, our op is somewhere else. And coming up these trucks and stuff, taking sniper fire. Jay and James Hall, they ended up finding this, you know, one of our HVTs. We always had a, a packet of someone who was a high value target, but we needed to capture. We needed to get them and capture them. Yeah. Um, and it turns out being his brother. That's what he was saying. He was saying he was his brother. Looked exactly like him. Suppose he was his brother. Yeah. yeah. So Jay and James Hall are walking, you know, kind of escorting this guy down. And the, <laughs> the sniper somehow shoots our HVT Jeez. in the face. Yeah. And you know, they take cover. We hear, we're listening to everything on the radio. Like, wait, he got, our HVT got shot? So either this sniper is that good where he's killing this his own buddy or he's terrible and misses misses you guys <laughs> misses it's his buddy yeah yeah well, i don't know which one it was but i don't know 
Or he probably figured we don't want that guy. Loose, yeah, yeah. Loose lips. We don't want him saying anything, yeah. you know. Yeah. Crazy man, so I wasn't on that. I wasn't there, but he, they were putting it all out on the radio. Like, <laughs> pretty entertaining, man. <laughs> yeah. Pretty crazy. Probably his family member too. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Uh, so we ended up going up this, you know, this mountain. It took forever. You know, we got like ten trucks coming, you know, including, you know, Afghan partner force trucks too. So we got a lot of people to bring up this cliffs. You know, there's cliff on the right. And the cliff up top, you know what I mean? So yeah. no way to go except for up and around. Yeah. Finally get to where we're going. We see our target. Like it's late at not late, but the sun was going down, you know. Like we found where we're going. Crazy spot. You know, now now when the cliff's off to our left, because we kind of you know, spiraled around, the cliff's off to our left, and then it's mountainside up top. Um we uh rond, so rest overnight. So sun's gonna come down. And then as soon as the sun comes back up, we're gonna we're gonna SP. We're gonna start yeah. start moving again. Um, so we put claymores out. You know, we had the uh, thermals up in the trucks and all that. Um, Brian's in the back shooting up uh, loom rounds from the from the mortar. Yeah, let them know we're there. Yeah, you know I mean, we get better loom over what's going on. Here. Yeah. Um, we're cycling through sleep. You know, yeah. our, you know, one guy up, one guy down. We had a lot of guys. I I couldn't sleep all night. Yeah, we're in their territory. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't, Not I couldn't comfortable. sleep, man. Yeah, I remember just laying down. It was a little cold, sleeping right underneath the trucks to get warm. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the sun's coming up. Everyone's pretty agitated. It's like day two into this thing. Everyone's pretty agitated. Um. Sun's coming up. Everyone packs their stuff. We're bringing in claymores. Hudson. Uh, Chris Hudson brings in the claymores and he's he, he brings them all in. We're starting SP as soon as we movement, man. I, I want to say like two inches of wheel movement, bam, ambush. We end up getting fucking hit hard too. And it was yeah. like rounds were coming everywhere, rounds were coming down from you know the, the valley out in the bottom. There was like this finger coming down, it was you know, the wadi in the bottom, finger coming down in the mountains, and then up top. We're taking rounds from up top now. So left side, right side. We're getting yeah. ambushed all over the place. Everywhere. All over the place. So we're returning fire. We really don't even know where the hell we're shooting at because we're, we're taking rounds all over. You know, 50 cals going this way. We're shooting um, goosed off the other way. Man, it's, we're getting hit all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Um, that's when I'm, I'm grabbing my, I want to say like my primary weapon was the, Small D. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my primary weapon. I'm like, hey, AR, get this thing out of here, man. Yeah, get me the, out of here. Give me these rockets. You know? Yeah. So me and, me and Chris Hudson were, that was like our primary yeah. rounds, man. We're just grabbing, grabbing rockets, shooting them, shooting them, <laughs> shooting them. You know? um, is this, and is this kind of what we talked about before breakfast this morning this is when you were swapping out? Swapping out, you know, like <laughs> here you you do twelve, I do twelve. Yeah, yeah, but Back we're just yeah. all we're doing is just aging each other. Yeah, you're yeah. still taking the amount of blasts in your head, yeah. man. <laughs> it and, doesn't feel good. And I think at the for end of it, you're kind of like whoa. A lot of the viewers to understand a little bit of why why you thought at the time you were you know making sure it was good, but these back blasts are not good. No, like they they mess people up. No. Um, I mean, you and I both talked about that this morning for a little bit. It, it's a it's a true syndrome that has yeah. taken over a lot of people. Yeah, just, um, it, 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 I think it's in the uh, the manuals. Three rounds per yeah, person. You yeah, know? we were doing like twenty a day. You know? Shit. <laughs> so you get you get this weapon system. You start you start shooting it. You start doing mm. your thing. You guys are getting ambushed. Mm. And what's going on at this time? Like, um, our medic than, goes down. Uh, he ends up taking a round to to his elbow, Jake. Jay Collins, he takes around. They're prepping him for medevac, and the whole time we're we're still getting hit, man. And you know, yeah, Jay he's your medic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's our senior medic at the time, and he goes down. We're prepping him for medevac. We're still getting hit, and uh, we're trying to overcome this. You know, we had more high mars come in. It was pretty entertaining. But was, um, I'm shooting up. I mean, I got the I got the small D. I'm shooting up the mountain top. Uh, they're rolling, they're rolling grenades at us. You know what Jesus. I mean? I remember just yeah. watch, bouncing grenades coming down. Boom! Oh, shit! You know, like God damn it! You just kept taking them. You know, they just yeah. kept coming. They just kept coming and coming and coming. But all we do is just keep fighting. Yeah, keep fucking shooting. You know, we're pretty fortunate for. I mean, you actually have one guy shot. Yeah. You know? 
Um, and then it was your medic to top it all. Yeah, it was I think, medic. I think that's interesting too. Some people have asked me like, oh, like, you know, oh, I know so-and-so in the military, but he was just a medic. And I'm like, that j- just a medic is not a thing. Like, he does the exact same thing everyone else is doing. Yeah. And he's meant to also go help you when you're hurt. You know, like that's his... He's not standing there just like smoking a cigarette, like for Man, look to go at those down. grenades coming down at these idiots. Like he's doing the same shit everyone else yeah. is doing. Uh, he was hanging around yeah. back there. Yeah, and I mean, he took around. Yeah. Like, oh, he took around, you know. So he's like, a solid medic, man. I remember, he went down. He was, he, I mean, they, they hit him with ketamine, I think. And yeah, he was kind of loopy, but he was still giving classes on how to do manage his, him up. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you gotta do this. Do you it know? right, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> so he was so, kind of messed up. So this 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 ambush is still going down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how many hours did it last? Man, those kind of firefights, man, you really don't remember. I, the sun was coming down. Remember, we started. It started when the sun was coming up. Yeah, we started when the sun was coming up. Man. We ended when the sun was coming down. It was all day. Full day at work. All day, man. Earned I remember your paycheck. The, so there was only one way that, you know, Jay could have got shot. It was from that finger. You know, it was from that finger where, where I looked off to the cliff to the left. That's when you know me and Hudson were shooting these, you know, Carl Gustafs down there. Um, but that's when I was like, man, they were still getting rounds down there. So I grabbed, you know, I grabbed the scar, yeah. the press scar with an optic on it, man. Didn't go to sniper school or anything, but you know, I put it down. See the dude, oh, a single dude in this finger hanging out in the trees, man. Has to be him. There's only one direction Jake could have got shot at. It was right there from that finger, you know. Yeah. See that dude sitting there. Took me a couple rounds to get him. Get him right in the tree. <laughs> he's yeah. hanging out in the tree. And I'm shooting his ass. So I like to say fucking uh, got revenge for Jake. Good. <laughs> you saw his ass go down. Yeah. And everything. Good. Yeah. It's nice. Oh, Walked it in and got his ass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Karma. Yeah. Same day karma. <clears throat> yeah. Same day service. <laughs> yeah. So we determined at the end of that day, man, it was, it was a long day. Sun was going down. The, our next travel was was going to be around the bend in that road we had no it was, that was the beyond we didn't know it was beyond that that bend in the road yeah i think that's when we decided we ain't going back down there like that was they're obviously protecting something they're going to hit us that hard you know what i mean yeah we ain't going down there we'll probably get the birds up see what's down there you know because it was, so it's kind of a pain in the ass we had a back trucks up on this windy cliff road you know it was pretty intense so after yeah after this huge firefight, sun's going down. Now we're backing up trucks, yeah, to get the fuck out of there. And, Pretty fucking rough. And I think uh, for the viewers listening and stuff, we we will uh, share some of the, the footage of, of some of these events, yeah, to give a perception of really what happened, right? Because some people can kind of put two and two together, especially if they weren't in the military and stuff. But <laughs> this isn't you're not fighting on in a in a flat ground or anything. You're you're fighting in mountains, yeah. And you know these guys are. This is they're they're native to that land. They know what's going on there. They mm-hmm. know they know what they're doing. They know where they're at. And you know, even though they're running around with some Jesus kicks and an AK, <laughs> that's their land, man. They know no matter how much cool stuff you have, that they have one advantage over you. Yeah. It's home field advantage, right? And so, they know that yeah. They know their backyard better than you do. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's something I tell people too when like when I train people with firearms and stuff, like, do you ever do you ever even run your house just to even see how that like, well, why would I do that? Just know your know your know your arena, man. Yeah. Know your arena because that puts you gives you a bit of an advantage over yeah. that person trying to cause harm to you or whatever, yeah. right? So you you guys sun up, sun down, you earn that paycheck, mm-hmm. your medic goes down. Um thankfully it wasn't lethal, right? Yeah. Um you take you take out the the guy who did it. And and what happens that evening? Like what like where where does it go from there? So it was it was a three day op total. Yeah. Uh, we were just gonna do it for three days, so we, that's when we SP'd back. We're gonna go back to uh, Diablo, mm-hmm. kind of regroup, refit, uh, refresh, you know, rehydrate at least. Yeah, it was a long day. Yeah, <laughs> and just basically prep for the next mission we got going on. You know, usually yeah. we we ran missions, you know, back to back to back. You yeah. know, refit for three days, rest up, or back on the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next mission after that was. Uh, pretty big. You know, I, there was some time in between that. Everyone started getting dysentery. <laughs> I never says the I don't know if those mosquitoes and stuff like that, but everyone everyone got hit with some nasty stuff. You know? Yeah. And this is when we um, 
we got real big with um, uh, the ALP commander. Brian ended up becoming really good friends with uh, Lal Muhammad. Mm-hmm. He was the ALP commander. They were, man, they were like buddies. It was kind of funny. Their, so for their the relationship. listeners, can you, can you explain what the ALP commander was? It's the Afghan local police. Okay. Um, it was basically just their police of, of their community. Yeah. You know, they're pretty big, but that's just their community. But the relationship that Brian had with cool. Law Muhammad, it was kind of funny, man. Was, they were like brothers. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in Afghanistan, the local police there is, you know, they're ran by money. Yeah. They're motivated by money. Yeah. You know, as long as you provide, provide them something. Yeah. They'll do anything you want. So one you know? day they're Taliban, the next day they're American. <laughs> they're fucking friends. They're, they're yeah, whatever right. the fuck they want to be at that day. We'd give them fuel for their trucks. And yeah. Shit like that. And, you know, ammo and, you know, I don't know, money maybe sometimes to feed their families or something. You know, but, yeah. Um, but we had a pretty good relationship with uh, uh, the local populace there. You know, the local police at least. Yeah. They'd always come with us, you know, to on these missions and stuff. And, and most of them were... Not really all that good, you know. They would get into a firefight, and these guys would be down, smoking their weed. <laughs> <laughs> they're taking cover. Like as soon as the moment, you know, a round will crack off, they'll go, you know, hide and smoke their weed and shit. While we're there trying to fight, yeah, yeah. trying to figure out what the fuck's going on, He's smoking know? a joint. Yeah, it's <laughs> a great time. Yeah, great time <laughs> to fucking these fuckers smoke a fighting. Joint. <laughs> over here. Let, me, let me spark one up here real quick. <laughs> Crazy man, I'm pretty sure the other guys can fucking laugh at that shit too. You see it all the time. Like, you guys can't be smoking this show while we're out here, man. Like, <laughs> hey, dude, that's their culture, yeah. So, um, but yeah, we get pretty good friends with the local police. We did a lot. Of, we, we trained them a lot, a, a lot on tons of things. You know, we also had along with this, we had um A and A S F. So that's you know Afghan National uh, Army, Army. The S F. So Special Forces guys. These guys were fucking awesome. Yeah, these guys were straight up Afghan operators, man. They were they were they were they were solid dudes. Like I, I actually enjoyed being with them, having them there, because they were they were fucking meat eaters too, man. They were, <laughs> they were crazy guys, man. Yeah. They were crazy guys, and they took care of us. You know, we took care of them. They took care of us. And a lot of them got trained by you guys. So. Yeah, yeah, a lot of man for years and years yeah. and years. Yeah. I think, in, in before we get any further with that, mm-hmm. what people don't understand is a lot of these guys. Some of you guys are going to war and coming back home. These guys weren't, man. No. They, they're there the whole 20 years. It's their life, man. That's, that, that was their life. There, no. there was no, oh, well, I'm going back home and I'm going to do a workup and go back on it. No, those, those fuckers were out there the whole time. Yeah. To me, that's why I found so much more like resentment when they pulled out of Afghanistan yeah. and we left a lot of them behind because these fuckers have been running and gunning for this long and survived that long. Yeah. And then now we're just going to leave them to the wolves. Yeah. I'm not really smart on all that, but I want to say these guys were promised to like, like the, you know, like the interpreters and they were promised them an oh, American yeah. life. Yeah, know? they they were. Yeah. They were, they were promised to, you know, fight for your country, fight alongside with us. We'll give you a spot here in America. Yeah. And then we just bounced. It's rough. It's tragic, man. Like, and I, I hate to say we, right? But yeah, well, me, I, I would, I would have done anything. Yeah, we, we all would have taken that and done something different. But just tell the me reason signed, why man. I say we is because it was, it was our nation who bounced on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, our, our administration. Who, yeah. I don't want to get into that rabbit yeah, hole. It's, it's, but <laughs> it's a whole other rabbit hole to get down. But, but it, <laughs> it sucks, man, to see those. Like you just said, right now, these guys are fighting alongside of you, yeah. sharing, sharing, sharing the same battlefield with you yeah. in their own in their own homeland, and we left them. Yeah. So, you guys are working with these guys. Mm-hmm. You're working with the the famous police guy. So, yeah. I want to highlight all the guys that you know we had working for us. You know, we had uh, NMRG, uh, National Mine Reduction Group. So these guys, we we paid um, them to basically find IEDs. You know, we paid them. And these are Afghans. Yeah, yeah. we trained them. They used the Cheyas, which uh, uh, Ryan Hendrickson is using right now in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. We get we provide them chairs, training, um, housing. You know, they're basically what they we eat, sleep, shit with them on a daily basis. We're, yeah. They're living with us, you know. Yeah. But they're they're paid off our own money. They're not part of the national army. They're not. They have no affiliation. They're just civilian yeah. dudes contracted to us. Try to find bombs. Try to find bombs. Yeah. So we had them as well. And I remember they they'd be like kind of beefing with the <laughs> national army and all that stuff too, but. Um, so we had the ALP, we had this one big mission, um, 
we had reports that ISIS, it was like an ISIS breeding ground, but the terrain was pretty crazy to get around. Um, crazy terrain, but we got to get around it. And we're expecting to have a ton, a ton of, a uh, ton of ISIS there. Yeah. So we we get with the uh, Lol Muhammad and, you know, Brian, you know, Brandon and Smith, they would call it, um, Craigslisting. They would call it Craigslisting for people. You know? Yeah. yeah. They put like the flyer out. Yeah. Not, you know, the notional flyer, yeah. but they, they give it out to Lol Muhammad. We need people, you know, people to fight ISIS, you know, come help us out. You guys want your land back, whatever, you know, like come help us Join out. Join the fight. And Lol Muhammad, he, he came through. He brought us over like 200 Afghans willing to fight. We're like, yeah, man, now we got an army. You know, hell yeah. yeah. We're down, man. We're down. We, we, had, we had other people out too. I think we had Af Afghan Border Patrol was out there. He hooked it up, man. We got a lot of people. Good fucking task force, man. Yeah, man. Big we one. had a lot, man. We had a lot of people. So it's pretty cool. Like, we're going to. We're gonna crush this shit, and that's basically what we did. Is green berets, man. We're force multipliers. Yeah, so that's basically what we did. We we multiply like a motherfucker. Yeah, um, to get down on this our next mission. Yeah, um, this next mission, you know, the, it was like a windy road, hilltop, windy road, and then it was a bunch of huge boulders in the middle of this this road. Yeah, huge boulders. So obviously, there's something else at this site now. We don't know what's there. It's a school, boulders in the road. They don't want us to go past that area. Yeah. we're gonna go <laughs> we're gonna go fucking do it uh so we got all these people um we kind of prepped the battlefield you know what i mean like sit there it means we'll mortar we mortar the area yeah. you know put in a bunch of rounds as down as there as maybe can. clear it out maybe these guys will take off running we're gonna go see what's down there you know um that was day one uh we get down there probably we're not even all the way there yet so take the windy road we get into a couple of firefights there was this one big one um get to this village afghans are there you know they're they're crushing it they're yeah. long fight alongside us we're we're dropping bombs at air force you know there are tons of bombs are being dropped you know yeah i got the saw out shoot shit um but then we got to go down you know the firefight finally ended we got to go down kind of assess what happened you know the the bda the assessment of it and we find a lot a lot of different shit you know what i mean as we're going down there uh i'm on foot we got nmrg up front we got uh chief smith chris hudson it's just us three us americans us three americans on foot and then we got um nmrg up front probably about nine to ten nmrg um coming up to this compound uh we're walking up we're kind of casual with it we just dropped bombs this year we're just here to do a bda yeah dude kicks in the door bam metal door kicks it out fucking sprays us ak sprays us man he's i remember that's that's when when uh for me time stopped like it was uh, you know from the movie pulp fiction it was divine intervention man yeah Time completely stopped for me. I was so slow at everything, I couldn't even pick my gun up. That was that moment. Trying to pick my gun up, and this dude is just spraying us. You know, I don't know how many rounds he shot, but it was just, I could see every round. Every round was just coming at us. Um, somehow Chris Hudson's fast on the gun and fast on the trigger. Bam, bam, puts him down. Um, that's when it like hit me, man. Shit, I'm... That was crazy, you know, like fucking rounds. This is the day I chose not to wear my helmet that day. I wore a ball cap. <laughs> Fuck, never again, you know? Yeah. So rounds are flying. Um, check myself really quick, fast. You know, like, I don't think I'm hit. You know what I mean? Come back. I was like, you know, my, my main weapon system is a, a small D. You know? So grab a small D, another door. Uh, I think there's more fire come from that one. Boom, blow this door down. As soon as I turn around, I feel this like hotness. You know, this is where I, you know, I get shot in the ass. You know, feel this hotness it hit my ass. And I grab an EOD, check my ass. Dude, I think I got fucking shot. <laughs> so I'm in the middle there. Getting, we're, we're all getting shot at. And I'm pulling my pants down, trying to see if I got shot. I was like, yeah, man, you, you got shot. Yeah. 
Forrest Gump, you man. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. fucking shot. Fuck, man. God damn it. You know, I just want to go get checked out by uh, you know, Chief Smith and all that. He's like, yeah, you definitely got shot. He's like, what do you want to do? You want to get out of here? Medivac? I'm like, no, nah, man. I'm, I think I'm good. I'm not passing out. I think I'm good. So what, what, I'm, what I'm guessing it was probably like a ricochet hit. You know, the velocity of the round went down and just stuck in my ass. You know? It didn't really hit anything. I'm, like, I'm not bleeding out or anything. So yeah. I guess I'm good, you know? Yeah. Stay in the fight. This episode is brought to you by Portillo's Artisan Jerky. Guys, some of the best beef jerky I have personally had. I learned about this beef jerky from a fellow Marine while in the Marine Corps. He started off by bringing a tub every time, selling out to all the Marines, eventually increasing his, his sales, helping out with Marine Corps ball funding. This guy's awesome. His beef jerky is amazing. He puts a lot of love into it, and he makes it out of El Paso, Texas. Portillo's Artisan Beef Jerky actually ships now and can give you free shipping on any order over 50 bucks with code FSHIP50. Go to portillosartisanjerky.com and support this guy amazing beef jerky i'm super glad he's on the episode as a sponsor and i'm super glad to now get his jerky shipped to me in houston check him out portillos artisan jerky.com owned and operated by a veteran of the marine corps check him out so this these uh, infamous you getting shot in the ass yeah. it's, it's actually on youtube right mm -hmm. <laughs> your videos been watched a lot yeah yeah and, and you're, it's on there and we'll share it for the viewers so they can get the reality are you okay? Eddie! Eddie! Chief! This guy hit the fucking ass! Hey guys, over here! Come hey, on! Hey! Hurry up! Hurry up! You decided to not wear your, your helmet that day. Yeah. And now you're like, all right, fuck. I'm wearing my fucking helmet. Yeah. Fuck the ball cap. Like, let's get rid of this shit. <laughs> yeah. So, get shot in the ass. You, you're like, I'm, 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 re I'm here to stay, right? Yeah. I'm here to stay. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. So what happens? Do you leave? Do you stay? What happens? <clears throat> we ended up, so that, that was another day, a three-day op that day. We ended up just coming right back to Diablo to refit because that was a crazy fucking day. A lot of, a lot of dudes got shot. It was, it was nuts, man. And that's what we found out. We are kind of like piecing things together. <clears throat> this fucking Lol Muhammad uh, brought us some like sketchy dudes. Yeah. You know, they, weren't, they weren't like normal guys. You know, they weren't local farmers or anything like that just trying to win their country back do a little bit of intel on these guys and turns out these guys were taliban wow so now we're we're fighting along with taliban you know we're wow we're, the guy you the guys you were there fighting first yeah you're now with fighting like isis with the taliban with the taliban like literally no shit side to side yep. wow partners Fuck. So that one saying, you know, you're, you know, you're the enemy. My enemy is my friend, you know? Yeah. It's basically what it was. We were, we had the same common goal, same fight. We wanted the same thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was, remember just, I'm giving these guys ammo. I'm equipping these guys. I, I remember they're coming up to me. No one spoke English or even, you know, tried to, um, He's like, he wanted a belt for his pants. His pants were falling down and stuff. Yeah. I gave him a piece of 550 cord, right, wrapped it around his waist, and like, yeah. good to go. And he's the happiest dude ever, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, equipping. Yeah. Fucking Taliban right now. You're fucking, Making yeah. makeshift slings for them out of 550 cord, yeah. you know? So now they're comfy, they're happy. Taking care of them like they're your little brother, man. Yeah. Wow. Give him a child, feeding them, give them MREs, water. Because they were pumped. They were ready to fight. They wanted yeah. to fight ISIS, yeah. They're fighting with you. Yeah. yeah. At that point, you guys are mission oriented. Let's yeah. let's do this shit. Yeah. When you find out that they're they're Taliban, what? How did that affect the team dynamic with you guys? Like, where? Like, I'm I'm sure nobody was just like, oh yeah, they're Taliban, whatever. You know, yeah. like, I'm sure a lot of you were like, what the fuck? Like, we're yeah. we got the this fucker got the Taliban to come help us. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do that? He, 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 even on movies, man, it's always the police guy of some sort that does some crazy shit, and you know, even in all these movies, right? <laughs> so even in real life, there you go, yeah, this yeah. fucking police guy. He's motivated by yeah. money. You know, he's, yeah, he gave him the right money, and he yeah. got you the Taliban. He got his people. Yeah. I mean, we, it wasn't the people we expected, but yeah. he got us the people, you know? Yeah. And they fought. They fought. You know, some stood, stood back. They didn't want to get shot. Yeah. So we're doing all the work. You know, they, they wanted to use our... You know, our bombs, our, our ammo. And yeah. Us to do the work. Because they wanted to use their shit on you yeah. later. Yeah. They were there. 
playing hand in hand with these guys. Yeah. Fuck. I'm yeah. Take a shot to that one, man. Oh that's, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Thank you, thank you. Have a beer. Ah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, when you first found out they were Taliban, what what went down? Like, we... um, as for the team, you know, the ODA yeah. guys, our uplift, um, you know, JTAC and all that. We we were kind of like surprised at the time, but we actually just ran with it. Like we need it's working. It, it's working. Whatever we're yeah. doing, it's working. You know? So, but we were all pretty surprised and like, man, this is this is some unheard of shit. Like, yeah, I mean, let, no let's, one has let's done face this. it. I don't think anybody's even come forward and, and said this yeah. in like in public, kind of yeah. like what we're doing right now. Yeah, I, I was I wasn't really sure of when to actually tell this story. You know? I mean, I. Didn't, I don't know if it was wrong or right, but at the time it felt right. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I it mean, it was working. Yeah. So, at any point, did the Taliban guys know that you knew they were Taliban already? Or I think so. Yeah. Did they did they start so. change a little bit on how they were acting? Or they kept their distance. Yeah. A little bit more after that, but this was like man, maybe a week into hanging yeah. out with them all the time, you know. But you know, after these couple of days of fighting, it was didn't really know. And we were piecing it together. But, yeah. The Taliban, yeah. What and I think for some of the viewers to understand, the Taliban made up of mostly actual Afghan natives, right? Some of these guys were forced to be Taliban. Maybe yeah. they didn't want to, but they, hey man, it's what you're gonna fucking do. Yeah. So when ISIS is trying to come and take over their land, they're like, "Fuck you!" Like we're coming after you too. Like oh, yeah. you know, if the Americans are going, we're, and in this case, <laughs> let's join the Americans. Yeah, let's well, go use get the American them, right? money. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 fight. You know. It's like oh, another proxy war with it itself almost, like, yeah. right? You know, it's crazy. But I think for me, the the thing that I want to point out in this podcast is for the ignorant people out there that think these people are like ISIS and stuff are like, you know, protecting the land or anything. No, these guys were literally going into Afghanistan to cause havoc. Yeah, They're not there to go take over a village and make it better. They're going to ruin it. They're going to kill people. Yeah. They're going to ruin families. They want to kill you because yeah. they don't. You don't believe in what they believe. They believe yeah. if you're if you're a female, see, this is the one big thing here, and people are going to shame me for this. And you know what? I don't give a shit. Yeah. I told myself before doing this podcast, I'm not here to make people happy. If I if I make you happy, great. If I make you mad, I don't care. Right? I used to be like, oh, well, I better be cautious. You know, hence why I'm wearing the shirt, and I'm sure people are going to get mad about it, but I don't fucking care. <laughs> I love right? it. I support those guys <laughs> going out there and fighting Hamas. But when women in America complain about women's rights and stuff like that, like, I get it. And they, they probably had their rough times in life. And, you know, I'm sure there's still some times. Mm -hmm. But being a woman in America is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what it's like because I'm not a girl, right? But yeah. I, I can see it. You know, I, my wife, if I go tell her right now, Go do this, 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 and she can smack me across the head and be like, fuck you. I'm not doing that. Like, you go do it yourself, asshole. And <laughs> and it's not frowned upon in this in this community or culture now where, you know, if a woman fights back towards a man or stands up to herself. I mean, we have women in, in, in office, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we have different things like that going on versus in these countries, women can't do that. Yeah, no. They can't. They can't show their, their natural beauty. They can't. They can't do any yeah. of that stuff. They're restricted yeah. in life. So, you know. It's it, it's the reason why I tell people when you agree with organizations like Hamas, ISIS, any of these guys, the Taliban, all these, you know, like, I won't be specific because somebody I know is all about women's rights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's has recently been like, you know, support Hamas in the fight against the invaders. You know, you're supporting organizations that give two fucks about your women's rights. In fact, you're nothing to them. You should be covered up and you should be a slave to their own beliefs. These people, mind. these people aren't, I hate, and then again, right, me and you understand this, and many of the viewers do understand it, but not all of them do. These guys, yeah, they might be Muslim, but they're not, they're not real, like, they're extremists. Extremists. There's extremists exactly. in every religion, there yeah. is. Yeah. But these guys aren't your traditional, you know, no, like, Muslims are not getting taught right now down the road here in Houston at their service to, mm -hmm. to come out and kill Americans. And if they are, that's an extreme organization that's there. Mm -hmm. It's typically tied to some kind of, you know, right? Like craziness. So that's kind of why I also wanted to touch on this podcast yeah. because you, you understand better than anyone else. And now you're even just, you brought something forward to all of us. You were fighting alongside the Taliban. Yeah. These are Afghan nationals saying, we don't want these guys in our land. 
They don't even want, want fucking around. terrorists there. Yeah, they don't want exa- exactly <laughs> terrorists not wanting terrorists. Yeah, and, that, and that's fucking huge, man. Yeah, um, that's crazy. I mean, I don't know how I would have reacted. I would have been like, still got a mission, you know? Yeah, you still got a mission to do. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you're fighting with the Taliban. <sighs> fucking cop brings <laughs> brings you guys a solid solid match of people, I guess, to help you fight. Yeah. What um, you 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 brought up a story about an Afghan national who who uh, was fighting with you and mm-hmm. saw you get shot that day. Yeah. And he said something to you. Can you, can you share that with us? So yeah, we go back, uh, refit. You know, it was a crazy day. Uh, now we're prepping the next day. We're going to continue mission this, this uh, three, um, this three day up. We're going to finish it up. You know? um, uh, I still got a hole in my pants, you know I mean? From getting shot in the ass. Still got to hold my pants. We're going to finish up the rest of this up. We're just going to bypass this road and go to the next one to, to get to our final spot with the, the rocks in the road, you know, when it's blocked off. Uh, we get there, start prepping the battlefield again. You know what I mean? Prepping the bat- battlefield again. We're dropping mortars, but then they lined this, this mountain that we were mortaring them from. They lined it with IEDs, you know. Mm-hmm. So one of our NMRG steps on IED, bam, had a medevac him, yeah. But in the meantime, as we're prepping the battlefield, you know, we're kind of like talking. We actually had the commandos come out um, that, on that op, you know. And I got a huge story about, you know, the commandos that, that I didn't like. I'm probably going to piss off another, a lot of SF dudes, but commandos weren't, I think, at the time because there was, you know, a lot of insider threats from them. They were, yeah. they were setting off bombs inside of other campsites and stuff, you know. Um, we go down, we're talking a lot with, uh, with the commandos, our NMRG, ANSF, we're all trying to get comfy with each other, you know? I remember this dude comes up to me, I remember he had, he just got stung by a bee, you know, he's, he's got this swollen face, solid guy, nice dude, nice Afghan, you know, and he, I had the Terp with me, he was kind of interpreting what he was telling me, and I remember he's he telling me, um, he's like, hey man, you, you bled for my country, I'll bleed for you. You know, that in that moment, it was, it, it was pretty deep. That is deep. It was really deep, man. And that's what we're there for. You know what I mean? We're here to help these people. But for him to tell me that, man, I was solid. It's like, dude, I love that. Yeah. I will continue to bleed for your fucking country. I'll, I'll fight with you. you yeah. Know? We finally go down. We're about to, we're about to crush it. You know, commandos come up, you know, their commando, the commander comes up and he's like, hey, this is our country. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to take the lead on this one. Like, fuck yeah. You guys take the fucking lead. This is your country. Take the lead. You know, they put all their trucks up front. So we go down this, we go down the, the road, a mountain. It's kind of a bend. It starts a bend in the road. There's houses up there. <laughs> the way these guys cleared rooms, you know, we taught them how to clear rooms. They, yeah. they know how to clear rooms, yeah. But they're, 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 I guess their technique was just put a couple rounds in the door, bam, 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 clear the room. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's a technique. Hell yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah. not doing it. <clears throat> yeah. But you, it's yeah, your country. You, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. So they're all pumped up. They're ready to go. Man, they're excited. Young, young Afghans, you know, they're, they're solid dudes, ready to go. Um, remember, they just had this moment. They were like, fuck yeah, it's our country. We're leaving. They just, they just kind of just, they were truck one. They just took off. Yeah. Like, hey, tell them. Tell them, where are they, those guys going? Don't leave. We're, we're here riding in the convoy. You know, don't leave. They just took off. Yeah. Took off. He gets around the, another bend of the road. We can't see him anymore. And then all we hear is just explosions on the other side of the fucking. Fuck. That, that road. We couldn't even see that bend of the road. It was a hill cliff. That you couldn't even see what's over there. Yeah. We just hear explosions. Bam, bam, bam. And then a big, huge fucking gun. It was, you know, do, 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 big gun. Um, I were looking at Chris Hudson and I'm looking at him like, dude, I'm not fucking going over there. <laughs> yeah. Whatever's over there is a big fucking gun. Yeah. You know, like I'm not fucking going over there. Um, and then I remember, you know, we're, we're, we're getting shot at. We're from all over the, you know, one area we're, we're shooting, we're turning fire. Um, and then that Afghan, that, you know, the NMRG dude, I remember him, the guy who told me who bleed for me cause I bled, bled for his country. Uh, we're hearing that big gun come. He takes he takes a round in the knee. Takes a round in the knee. He he goes down. He, it tears his whole fucking leg off. Bam. Takes the knee. He's down. And then the next round that came, 
hit him right in his face. Damn. Like, he was out. Um, but I remember him telling me that. It was like, it's the first thing I think of when he told me that. I'll die. I'll bleed for you. Yeah. Fuck. He just took around the fucking face. You know? Yeah. Um, all hell was breaking loose, man. All these rounds were coming down. Yeah. You know? No idea what the hell just happened because they just went around that bend. You know, we don't know what the fuck's going on over there. Uh, returning fire. You know, I was the echo. So I'm listening. I'm listening to the bird. I'm listening to the trucks. And I'm listening to our guys on the ground. I'm listening to all this radio traffic going through. You know? I remember hearing, you know, from the birds, C-130. He came up on the net. Um, self-defense. 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 What the hell is that supposed to mean, man? Boom. They're dropping fucking five hundos on us. Oh, shit. Yeah. A couple, man. And you feel those. You, you feel them. Yeah. Especially being that close. You know what I mean? It's probably like 100, maybe less, maybe 50 meters, dude. Yeah. You feel those fucking things. It was, uh, it was a danger close shit there. It was definitely danger close. That, that, that's why I called up, you know. Yeah. You know, self defense. Um, so, vehicles on fire, commandos are pissed. You know, all these Afghans, everyone's fleeing. You know, everyone's fleeing from this area because we just got, we just got dumped on. Yeah. <laughs> Even had friendly bombs come down on us just to fucking get up there. Yeah. Um, so we kind of like, we come back just a little bit just to kind of regroup and see what, what are we going to do next? Yeah. yeah. Kind of get some cover. Those guys are still up there. Whoever got fucked up up there, you know, our friendly Afghans are still up there trying to figure out a plan. You know, commandos are getting pissed. You know, they're like, we got to get back. We got to get up there and grab our, our buddies. You're like, fuck, we know. We fucking know, you know? Yeah. They started put, fucking ran off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They're putting the blame on us. Like, it's your guys' fault. Yeah. All this shit, you know? But you got to remember at that time was uh, we were getting a lot of insider attacks from commandos. Correct. So seeing these guys getting agitated at us, um, I, was, I, I started getting on edge with them now. So we just took a hit, huge fucking hit. A lot of dudes, friendly dudes died. And now the commandos are mad at us. You know, like they were like putting their gun up. Oh, shit. Like not directly in our face, but they're like talking. They're, yeah. they're bracing up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like they're, they're ready flexing. to fight. Yeah, yeah, they're flexing hard, man. So I back up a little bit. <laughs> like shit's about to go down right here now. Now we're not worried about these guys. Now we're worried about fucking commandos, yeah. man. Fuck. We calm them down a little bit. Um, that's when, you know, the captain, you know, and Chief Smith, we all decided we're going to go back down and we're going to grab the bodies, you know. We're, we got to get these friendly bodies and put them on a bird, send them home. You know? So we get up there. We always plan. We had solid. Uh, it was a Tommy Bourget. He was laying down suppressive mortar fire. Oh, shit. <laughs> Accurate rounds, man, on this area where we were getting hit. You know, we we're getting hit from this area. Go down. We're getting bombs up. Everything. We had 50 cals up. Scove. Uh, we had, you know. Scove was on the Mark 19. He was pumped, man. <laughs> He's pumped up. Shooting everything up. We ended up getting back to the, the, the Humvee that's on fire. You can hear, like, the 50 cal rounds fucking cooking off. Shit. So we're rolling up. These things, these rounds are cooking off on us. We're, all we want to do is grab the bodies, you know. So we're grabbing bodies. These things are toasted still. These bodies are fucking toasted. And we grabbed every body. You know, we didn't know who it was. Everyone's burnt up. We don't know what kind of bodies they were. Were they friendly bodies, enemy bodies? We don't know. Just grabbing them. We're grabbing everybody that we can grab. Just grab, 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 grab. Get everything out of there and go, you know. So the commandos are pretty happy with that. We were like, fuck, that was dumb. Why the fuck did we do that? You know? We SP back. We, you know, we come back, kind of regroup, see what the fuck just happened. Um, I'm talking to the JTAC, and he's like, dude, we were watching everything. He's like, ISIS was in spider holes. When they reached around that, they reached around that, um, that bend in the road, ISIS jumps out of spider holes, starts tossing grenades in the Humvee. So everyone in that Humvee died. You know what I mean? So ISIS jumps on the, on the, on the Humvee, turns around in the turret, turns the 50 cal on us. That's what's the big gun that was coming after us. Yeah. Turned the 50 cal on us. Now it's bam, bam, bam. We're hearing, that's where that big gun was coming from. <laughs> yeah. But we were completely oblivious to what was going down there on the ground until he told us. Yeah. He's like, yeah, as soon as he turned that gun around, started shooting at you guys, that's when the bird dropped on you. Fuck, dude, that was... Trying to get him out quick. Yeah. That was insane, man. Huge ambush. 
we didn't even make it past those rocks. It could have all slightly been avoided had they just not kept fucking moving down just that road. Stay with just us. Yeah. Stay, yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah, crazy man. That is crazy. <laughs> so you guys get the bodies, and get them out of there, mm-hmm. right? And you stay there, right? I'm assuming you guys stayed there, right? Or yeah, did you for guys a get the fuck out too? Yeah. Yeah, we. Yeah, we got the fuck out. It took us a little while to like kind of regroup and see what the hell's going on and. I think the sun was going down by the time we left the whole area yeah um but it was probably one of the biggest moments in my life like where everyone was pretty hit pretty hard yeah the blast you know everyone was hit pretty hard remember yeah. just head was ringing nothing felt good yeah yeah uh, everything was down morale was down it's like people were dying yeah it's terrible man so this is like mid deployment Towards the end or towards the end. Towards the end. Okay. Towards the end, yeah. So you kind of wrap this up and then you, you kind of go back, regroup. Are you still getting this shit to the very end or Yeah. Um at the end of that there was no more. I mean, we were we were pretty much ending it. There was one more mission we had. I had to stay back at the big base or we're, we're prepping for something to come back to the States. Yeah. But we needed to do one more op, which I wasn't <laughs> able to get on. They did the op, and, turn, and a lot of our guys got hit by mortar rounds, incoming mortar rounds. Um, pizza, pizza man, he, uh, he ended up like blowing his leg, got his leg blown off and shit. And I think he's fine now, but I haven't spoken to him in years. But they got hit pretty hard, and that was our final, final mission right there. Um, everyone got hit pretty hard on that one, too. Um, so during this whole, whole time you're out there, especially on the third one, did you did you lose any of your green ODA guys? Like, we were losing. Um, so everyone was pretty messed up, man. We, in our ODA itself, we we didn't lose anybody. Everyone was like pretty much shot. Everyone was always shot or blown the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> but we were losing. We were losing buddies, you know, from different ODAs. Yeah. A lot of different ODAs were losing guys. Yeah. Um, I'm sure some of the infantry guys and stuff like that too, and everything. Else. Yeah, and. When they get medevac, they always came down to us because we actually had a roll, a roll three out there. Yeah, an actual med station. Yeah, where they can perform surgery and all that. So the medevacs would come to us, and we'd see everyone come in, and uh, some just died. And like, pretty shitty, you know. Yeah, no, most definitely. Yeah. So, it's your third and final deployment, right, mm-hmm. in Afghanistan? You kind of wrapping things up. You coming home to the states. You yeah. still at this time have your your ex wife, yeah, and your son. Your son's a little bit probably older now. Mm-hmm. When you get home, what's it like this time? Because I know it's I'm I'm sure it's definitely not the same. Yeah, from the first two, <clears throat> um, definitely things changed, man. I, only, I wouldn't say I changed, but you know things changed. We're coming home and uh, team have a ride home. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how to get home, you know. Yeah, things changed, you know, with with family and stuff. Uh, kind of lost it all. Yeah. I don't know if it was my attitude or it just wasn't there anymore. Yeah. You know, so getting back was like huge emotional time in my life. I was losing it all. You know, yes. Yeah. Losing my family. And and then, you know, I had all these med problems now too. It, it was just like one thing after another. It was yeah. like a domino effect. <laughs> you, you think you're dropping your pack, but it's like you almost got to put it right back on, right? Because you're yeah. like, fuck, like, yeah. what's going on here? So I had some, I had some like brain issues and stuff. I was, you know, a lot of TBIs. Me and uh, Nate Smith, we ended up going to uh, Intrepid Spirit on um, Camp Lejeune, a brain clinic. Get a lot of knowledge from them. You know, they're telling me you, you got some brain bleeding, you got scar tissue now and on your brain and all that. So learn a lot from all that. And yeah, I think it helped out. It helped out a lot. But after that, you know, that's when they're, you know, talking to docs and they're like, hey. We're we're possibly going to be med med boarding you, you know. So, mm-hmm. and that's that's when my emotional time hit. It was like I'm losing my job, my house. I get no longer I need a house anymore. You know, like my wife left, and <laughs> what do I need a house for? So, so you you get out of this last deployment, and you're pretty much going through a divorce right off the bat. Yeah, right off the bat. Yeah, uh, not even a hey, a welcome home, fucker. It's more like see you later. Yeah, pack your shit. Fuck, <laughs> or I'm packing my shit. Yeah, yeah. So. For the viewers, med boarding is 
you know, you're getting, you're getting retired by the military because yeah. you're no longer medically fit to be in the military. Yeah. And I can only imagine for someone of your magnitude of what you did and, and what you were doing in the military, it's hard to take that away from somebody and be like, okay, you're done. Like, go home. You're yeah. done. You're literally fucking tip of the spear in Afghanistan, dropping freaking big bombs on people, you know, blowing shit up, yeah. fighting alongside the Taliban, which is crazy. And then all of it, I mean, you literally get shot in the ass and you're like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. I just got to put my helmet on now because, you know, <laughs> I, I might get hit in the head too, you know? <laughs> and now you're home and they're telling you, they're basically taking your, your, your they're taking your, your domain, man. Just yeah. like, give me it. Go get out of here. Yeah. Some people might, that might be great for them. Right. But the, I feel like the level of the person you are at this point, you're an SF guy. You're not, you're not some, you know combat cook was just chilling and god i hope i get med boarded out of this fucker yeah, so i can I know, go right? home and, and, and ride <laughs> of the dream right so what what starts to happen at this time right it sounds like your life's kind of, kind of crumbling on you yeah, right for sure yeah now i'm just trying to find my place in the world now yeah you know i'm getting out it's pretty hectic time man how the fuck am i gonna pay my bills now am i gonna get paid and but i added a little you know the green beret foundation definitely helped me out i got that was the first place i went for help it was green Bray foundation yeah. it definitely helped me out yeah. you're uh you're doing uh i think they're doing that event this upcoming weekend right? yeah next right. weekend we're doing the yeah. rock the green beret we're over in san antonio san antonio right? 27th rock and bruise oh yeah yeah it's gonna be awesome oh yeah. yeah it's good to link up with other green berets and yeah hang out and you guys understand each other oh yeah right? yeah yeah so this is all happening. You're crumbling. Green Beret Foundation's helping you out. What mm -hmm. else happens to you, man? Um, I'm start trying to find a job, you know, and I finally get out. And now, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. Trying to find out where I fit. I, I think I'm at this level when I'm a Green Beret. And I don't. You know, I, I get it. Get a job anywhere. Yeah. You know, but fucking be fortunate to work there. like that, man. Yeah. Doesn't. You right? kind of lose. You kind of lose that, you know, like. Yeah. No one really cares. You know, uh, yeah. You, oh, you're a Green Beret. It doesn't transfer over to here. Like, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really didn't transfer over. Like, yeah, they're proud of you. Like, awesome. Awesome, man. Cool story. But what else do you got to offer? Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah you, what's your degree like? Yeah. You got shot in the ass? Cool. cool. Like, you know, whatever. Can yeah. You flip this burger. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking rough, man. I ended up getting a job with, uh, it, was a, it was contracting with, um, Lockheed Martin. Okay. And running their little security show they had over there in, in Troy. Pretty sweet gig. It was fun. I had nothing over there. No family, no friends. You know, it was kind of lost out there. I was living in a trailer. But I would travel back and forth. Florida, Alabama, Florida, Alabama. Just to work, you know. It was a lot of driving. Yeah. Uh, still, at, at that time, I was lost. I, yeah. I wasn't going to do that for the rest of my life. I didn't like that. You know? Yeah. Didn't like it at all. So, it sounds like you got kind of sick somewhere in between that line too, right? It's like, and this this is where med came in medical. It just had medical issues just down the road. It just kept happening, happening nonstop. Six months after deployment, I get out, um, get malaria. I get malaria Man. kicks in, and then probably one of the worst feelings I ever had. But I, at the time, I had a little bit of drinking problem too. You know, I was drinking a lot. All I just all I would think was, oh, I'm just hung over. You know, maybe I'm just a little sick. <laughs> got a little alcohol poisoning, man. It ain't gonna hurt no one, you know? yeah. Some Motrin and so new socks. And yeah, that's all I'm I did. Good, man. I heard my son would look at me like, "What's going on with you?" Like, man, I'm burning up right now. How's your son at this time? Like, probably like 13, maybe 13 years. Kind of gets it a little 14, bit. Yeah. 13, 14 years See old. See something man. wrong. Yeah, yeah, but he was like, "Take care of me," you know. It was yeah. Just me and him in the house. <laughs> yeah. He's watching me like, dude, what is wrong with you? Yeah. I don't know. Took me about two weeks of pain and suffering from this malaria. I finally decided I gotta go in. I gotta go in, man. I go in. I remember this young girl, you know, one of the nurses, she's taking my blood. Um she took the blood, go back home. <laughs> they only call me. I put I'm putting my head in my pillow. I'm ready to go to bed. Yeah. Uh the Air Force Base calls me up, like, hey, you gotta get back here now. I'm like, what's up? You got malaria. Shit. Like, can I just go tomorrow? 
sick right now. <laughs> like, no, you got to get out here now. Yeah. I remember getting back to that hospital again. The same girl took my blood. Now she knows I have malaria. And she's like freaking out. She's trying to take my blood and blood spewing everywhere. <laughs> she's like freaking out. She's like, Fuck. She's like oh. she yeah. comes in a fucking body bag seat. Yeah. She's, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's like freaking out. I got malaria. You know? So I was hit pretty hard with that, man. And that sucked. That, that was terrible. You know? Yeah. And then everything after that just kept falling place. I was getting kidney stones. I was getting everything. You know, it was, I wanted to say it all stems down from like a malaria. Yeah. It messed my body up, man. Yeah. Like bad. <laughs> yeah. Getting all this we other weird shit going on. You know? Yeah. A couple years down the road, I hope I'm not missing anything, but a couple years down the road, I ended up getting fucking thyroid cancer. I want to say it all came down to malaria just fucking up my hormones and my body was just a wreck. Well, you lived at this constant level of being up here adrenaline yeah. you know that testosterone i'm sure was flowing at that time oh yeah and then you just fucking stop yeah. from one day to another yeah you're right then you you gotta everything emotionally cycle everything is changing for you you're going through a divorce yeah. you're lost you your team got taken away from you you're not you don't got that team room and any that feeling anymore where you go back and you got your guys that you know got your back and now your body's just like i yeah. mean this way say a lot of guys that retire from this stuff end up dying pretty quick yeah man yeah heart from heart attack or yeah. yeah so you get cancer and how do you find out you have cancer man um i'm getting a job with with the police department now yeah trying to get a job with the police department they look at my um they look at my ekg <laughs> Think of my EKG, it looks like my heart was like not like the I don't know how the EKGs work, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they like, hey, you go go get checked out by your primary. And then uh go get checked by my primary. They're like, they just started rushing me to the ER. Took my shirt off, rushed me to the ER. Like, you had a heart attack. I had a heart attack. So I guess I was my heart was showing the symptoms of a heart attack, but yeah. I don't even remember how to even have a heart attack. Yeah. Just went with, but just went with it. Yeah. <laughs> No idea. So they're taking my blood and all that. Um, but then they, they find that my blood had too much calcium. Mm. So that's when, you know, they did all their x-rays and stuff. Bit. Yeah. Took all the x-rays and stuff. And that's when they find some sort of growth in my, in my thyroid. So I had to get it cut out and all that shit. But I definitely felt it after that. Once I got it cut out, my body started to change a little bit. And wasn't as tired, you know. Started to feel better. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Riptide Armory, veteran founded. Founded by former Navy SEAL Troy Molesky, Riptide Armory prides itself on being American made, veteran owned, and Navy SEAL approved. Guys, I use Riptide Armory. In fact, I reached out to Riptide Armory to be a sponsor of this podcast. Why? Because I want you, the listeners, to get amazing quality products made by veterans and owned by veterans. Guys, these guys are the real deal. I use them on my own firearms. I love them. They have an advanced gun cleaner and advanced oil. They even have an optic glass cleaner and they have all kinds of other good stuff like shirts and slaps. Their microfiber cloths are amazing. These guys just all around are good people. Great customer service. Check them out, guys. RiptideArmory.com. Use code CYSP15 to get 15% off. RiptideArmory.com. Check them out, guys. You get the cancer cut out. You start... You start to, at this point, you're still processing to go to the police department. Is that what you're, yeah. you're still doing? Okay, so after you, you're starting to feel better, right? You're starting to feel a little bit better. How do you start capturing yourself again? Like, where do you, where does, you know, is it not till after you get into the police department or is it before you get into the police department? Um, I want to say it was throughout the whole, whole time. Yeah. You know, I was always seeking help. Yeah. You know, on a, I want to say the VA had a huge, huge process in the helping. You know, was, I, I, my, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have issues, but I've, I've never had issues with the VA, you know? <laughs> you know, Chris, and I think that's something, let's touch on that, right? Let's yeah. touch on healing, right? Let's touch on helping veterans because, yeah, your story's huge. You you weren't, I, I mean, I'm not going to take away from anybody in the military. Anybody who serves and signs that line to go, like, I respect you already as it is differently from oh, other yeah. people, right? Because you decided to serve our country. And there's a lot of people like yourself that go through some things that, they're not, not anybody can deal with, right? Mm -hmm. And you and I, I'm sure, have both lost friends, not not in combat, outside of combat. Right. They lost the, the big fight, right? When you come home and yeah. you're trying to stay here, right? And 
me and you talked about this a little bit last night. I told you I had my own moment where I wanted to take my life. Mm -hmm. I was I was set and I was determined. Mm -hmm. um, and I found some healing myself. Yeah. And I used to be against the VA system. Fuck the VA, man. These guys are terrible. Common. They don't do anything, right? You, the first time I went to the VA, a guy was an asshole. I was like, you know, fuck you. I don't need your help. I yeah. left. Yeah. And now that I'm in the VA system, I got my, you know, some rating and stuff. I'm actually pretty impressed. Like, yeah, they're, they're just throwing everything at me now. Like, I think next week I got like three appointments, you yeah. know? And some people might not like VA medicine or anything. And now, you know, I work in healthcare now. Yeah. And all healthcare is fucked up, man. It's not just a VA system. It's everything else. Yeah. It's a profitable, you know, organization here in the United States. Like, healthcare makes money. Medicine, you know, they, they, they fix symptoms rather mm. than the actual problem. So... It's not it's it's a little unfair to bash the VA because not all of the VA is bad, right? I, I've I've now have had a good experience with the VA. Yeah. In fact, you know, the fact that now got right away jumped on on my mental health thing, MRIs for your brain and everything just to make sure yeah. everything was okay. And and I'm glad that you're bringing that up because recently I almost felt slightly embarrassed and shy to say that I kind of like the VA right now. Like they're helping. I have me, no issues. You know, <laughs> like yeah. There's a couple so, issues, yeah. but you know, but. Overall, man, VA has been nothing but help. Good. E you can easily make an appointment. Everything's online nowadays. Yeah. You can text your your primary doctor. Yeah. You know, easily, yeah. simple. Um, but what I found to you know for healing, you know, that's the physical aspect of the VA. Physically, they're on top of their shit. You know, they they help yeah. me out a lot. When it comes to mental health, um, wasn't really wasn't really my area where I needed. They weren't able to help me. Right. I'm pretty sure they help a lot of people, but from where I came from, they weren't able to help me. For my mental health, you know, healing, it, it, it was always uh, people, yeah, not processes. That's something, you know, uh, uh, Nate Smith would tell me, you know, the big thing that helps is people, not processes. You know, it's getting back in your, your own community, you know, hanging out with other Green Berets. Other dudes have, have similar, you know, stories just like you. And you're able to talk about it, you know. The VA, they, they didn't offer people like that. You know, they didn't offer people the same story as you have. They don't understand it. No, they learned, they learned from a book. You know, they're, they got their degree from a book, and that's all they know. I'm not knocking them, but. That's all they know. They, they help other people. They didn't help people like, you know, like us. Yeah. They, didn't help, they can't help that. Yeah. So what, what I found is what is people is what helped me out. Yeah. You know, talking to other Green Berets, talking to other dudes that have been in combat. Kind of find a relationship between that. Yeah. You know. So you start, you start getting the help from the VA. You start working on yourself. Mm -hmm. You get into the police department. Yeah. At this point, it's like a uh, state police department, right? Yeah. So when you're there, I'm sure you go through a, like a, like a, almost like a boot camp, the academy. You know, I, I've done yeah. it before myself, <laughs> right? And, and, and I went in there with a different perspective because it's like, man, I've I fucking, I'm a Marine, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's easy, you know? <laughs> but then there's differences, right? It's, it's a different <gasps> ballgame. It's a different world. The camaraderie is not the same as it is in, in the military. It's, it's different dynamics. It's different. It's, it's, it is different. Whether there's people say yes or no, I think it's different. Yeah. So you go through the police academy. How How is the police academy for you? It's actually pretty tough, man. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting that level you know, the tenseness from these guys. You know, it was, yeah. It was like going to boot camp all over again, yeah. which, man, I thought I was done with that yeah. shit. You know, I was like, man. So that's probably why it was like, whoa, 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 hold yeah, on. It was I, thought, huge, I thought we were fucking around here. I, at least I was yeah. past that shit. I was like, yeah. what am I doing right now? But yeah. at the end of the day, there was there was other combat veterans in there with me as well, you know? So if they're willing to do this stupid shit, I'm going to do this fucking shit yeah. too. So. And which I'm proud to be where I'm at now. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm proud. I'm glad I did that. It's a great job. You know, like, People you meet are, you know, are great. Yeah. Great dudes. You know, like, um, majority are veterans. Yeah. You know, the, d the dudes are not veterans. They're just solid. You know, like they'll, they'll, they'll definitely have your back out on the road and stuff. You know, yeah. I got no issues with that. So you go become a police officer. It sounds like you don't take the SWAT route and all that, you know, detective or any of that stuff. Yeah. You go into, I'm a motor yeah. now. I do motor, yeah. motorcycle stuff. Now, so. Yeah. So, which is amazing. You get yeah. to ride all day. <laughs> I think of chips. I think of chips every time I see motors. That's like, what yeah, I was yeah, saying, yeah, the good old movie chips, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, so, 
you're out on the road on a motorcycle. Yeah. Sounds like you you get through motors and and from what I know is motors is not easy to get into. No, it's pretty tough. Yeah, and and I've seen actually the motors tests and stuff like that. I'm like, "Oh shit, like yeah. I can't even do that on a bicycle." <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. <laughs> yeah. And it's all day, you know, the uh motor the motor training. It's yeah. all day riding. You yeah. mean you left, lose the feeling in your left hand. <laughs> yeah. You're in Arizona, man. It's hot. Hot. Jesus. Riding a motor in sauna. Arizona in 118 degree weather. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Talk about embracing the suck all over again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're in motors. How's your career going as a motor in, in motors? I, I, I believe you, you got hurt, right? Yeah. It was a huge change from policing. You know, it was still policing, but it's it's different. Tactics change. It's all your, I mean, you're on a bike. It's all the cover you got. You don't have a yeah. car anymore. Now you're yeah. pretty exposed in traffic. You're pretty exposed out in the streets. You're, yeah. You, you, tactics change. Yeah. Which I like. Yeah. I, mean, I, I see man, motors as it's like the Green Berets of yeah. the police department. You know, it's, yeah. pretty, it's, pretty, it's fun. Um, I end up going down on the bike, you know, for something stupid. It wasn't like I was chasing a high-speed chaser. Yeah. It was <laughs> going five miles an hour on a you know dirt road, slipped. Broke my ankle. That's how it always is, right? Yeah. Something stupid. <laughs> Something so easy. Nothing cool. No, nothing cool, man. <laughs> nothing cool at all. So I go down, break my ankle, and I'm getting surgery. Got a plate in my foot. Now. But I've had some time off I, I, during that during that time. I had some, a lot of time off. Kind of bored. Man, what do I do now? Um, started getting me thinking again. You know, I'm you know sitting in your house all day by yourself. Your brain starts it comes the moving. bad stuff again. Yeah, yeah, it comes the bad stuff, but. What brought me back is, you know, is um, the Green Beret stuff. Like, I wanted, I wanted my buddies back. Missed your team. Oh, yeah. That team room mentality. I, I, I missed it, man. Being on an ODA, being on a team room, being in a team room every yeah. day is, man. Yeah. You do everything in that team room. You, you, you're in pain. You're planning. You're bullshitting, wrestling with each other, fucking with each other. And, but you actually go through pain with each other. In there. Yeah. Crying. You're fucking. You're sucking together in that team room. Everything yeah. happens in that team room, man. Um, which is what I missed. I missed that time. And I wanted to re recreate that time. Yeah. But, and the best way I can do that is, you know, is what brought everything together on a team was probably guns, you know. It's all we ever talked about sometimes. Yeah. It was guns, going to the range, shooting, who was better than who. and um, But it re really brought people together. It was guns. Yes. Yeah. Iron so, sharpens iron, man. Yeah. I loved it. Miss it. So you're hurt, you're at home, you're going through a little bit of a slump there. Yeah. And you're like, you know, I fucking miss my team. I yeah. miss the team mentality. Yeah. So what happens now? That's where I came up with the, uh, you know, this business idea. Maybe I can, you know, be in the, you know, the firearms business, but still have my buddies coming and hang out. You know, so I yeah. built a team room in my backyard. It's a 200 square foot shed. Built this team room up, got my FFL, and pretty much selling guns and I have everyone coming at me now. It's social media is great. You know what I mean? It's, I've never had social media. It's definitely me. hard, right? Especially when you're not like, <laughs> it's new to me. I, yeah. It's new. I, I got so much pride for some stuff where I'm like, uh, we were just talking about a post earlier, right? Yeah. Where I was like, oh, I don't know how to, I don't know if I could do that, man, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it works. There's some things, but yeah. I'm new to it too, but it actually, the team room mentality is working now. You know, it's, People see team room tactical, and I'm getting people from all over. You know, all veterans, mo majority veterans. Yeah. Um. You know, we're, now we're talking about guns. We're bringing people together. Other Green Berets are inviting me over to to uh, for golf now. Like I'm golfing with the Green Berets. It, it's been great. Now I'm doing the you know rock the Green Beret and linking up with other Green Berets now. So the whole idea was it's great for me. Yeah. You know, it's still mentally healing on my end, but probably one of the best times of my life again, mm -hmm. you know, being on a team and now I'm doing team room tactical. So Because there's probably other guys out, out there that are going through the same thing or have gone through the same thing and yeah. they can't find that channel and yeah. they hear this and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. There's, there's no, and, and, you know, yesterday I brought you over to my house and um, you kind of saw my little spot in my garage, right? Like it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's something that you miss, awesome. right? Yeah, oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. I mean, you saw it yesterday. I got a little set up there. Like that's my thing. That's my little sanctuary. That's where... I run away from the stresses of inside of my house wow. with my girls and stuff. And I, 
I go into that garage and that's my little team room, man. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's where I'm happy. It's where I'm comfortable. And yeah. believe it or not, that's where I was sitting down one day cleaning one of my rifles and said, I'm going to do this fucking podcast that I've had planned for so long. This oh, is yeah. where it's going to happen. We're going to start it right here. And at first I was like, should I do it here? Like, and then I was like, no, you know, fuck that. I'm going to go big. And, you know, I'm doing it now. And, and, yeah. and it, it, it's funny because people are like, man, this, you know, like, how are you doing it? It's not easy, man. It's no, definitely man, it's not easy. Of, and I'm sure just like your business. It's a lot of work, man. Yeah. You, you, it's nonstop. People think money's coming out of everywhere. It's, it's not, man. No. I mean, I'm I'm right now like, ah, like, I don't, I don't want to talk to these guys afterwards to see how much it's going to cost me using a studio. But yeah. it's what you got to do to get somewhere, right? You, yeah. you, you got you, you to push yourself. And maybe by what we're trying to do here is might not be the best financially or something, but it might help somebody, right? I'm going all in, man. Yeah. Going for it. Yeah. Whether it works or it doesn't, let's try it. And yeah. and I think that's that's awesome. And I want to talk a little bit more about Team Room Tactical because, you know, I found you on, on social media and stuff as well. And and uh, after talking to you and everything, I was like, man, this, this is the kind of guy I want to bring on at the show. Because you have a lot to offer and a lot to say, but you're not out there. You don't have a fancy Hollywood book deal or any of that no. stuff. Like, <laughs> you, you've you been kind of, you're just a dude, man, hanging out in his, in his team room in his backyard, yeah. you know, doing his normal, you know, doing daily guns. job and, and, and everything. And you're not out there chasing, you know, top dollar book deals or no. any of that stuff. And, <laughs> and, and you're, you're, you're pretty freaking humble, man, from what I've gathered yesterday and today. Like, you, you're really humble. And, and I think that there's a lot of people in this community, veterans and, and law enforcement, that slightly feel like a little overwhelmed to actually make these decisions. And a lot, I mean, what better than sitting around a bunch of your homies, man, and you know, going through the exact same shit. That's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Mm. The ideas, the, the, some of these guys have the best business ideas, but they're a little nervous to do it. And I feel like if you look at a lot of veteran owned business, there's a lot of big companies going, yeah. going out there and doing things like, look at Black Rifle, man. Those guys are like, some people have their personal views with them and all that Rush. crazy stuff. And, and dude, they're, they're in the stock market, right? You know, like, you know, some of our sponsors, right? Like Grind Ops Coffee, the guy was, you know, federal law enforcement. And now he's, you know, out there slanging coffee, man. And it's doing good. It's doing big things. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of companies out there that are now starting to come up and people are like, man, they're, they're really good. Yeah, it's just veterans, man. Yeah. It's just veterans who had a lot of time to think and are putting it out there. So your team room tactical has a lot of, to me, an emotional value because it sounds like you were missing that team room. Yeah. And that's where it, that's where it stemmed. It wasn't just a random, like, oh, let me see, I'm going to Google what name yeah. works. <laughs> this is, this is from the heart, man. Yeah. So you start team room tactical. How does that start to go for you? Um, it's definitely tough. I mean, it's it, like, just like any, owning any other business, you know, it's putting a lot of money, time into it, but you know, all my time goes to, to, to policing. Yeah. Yeah. That's where majority of my time comes. Um, but then, you know, when I have my time off, it's all team room tackle stuff. So it's like no breaks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of, it's a lot of money put into it and getting out there to network. Um, it's actually overall pretty good. I think it's working out for my mental health and, Good. So like I said, meeting all these new people, and I, that's what I miss. You know, I mean, I'm bringing in my old team guys. They're contacting me. Like, we're, yeah, we're all getting back together. It seems like awesome. know, I'm, I'm hoping Team Room Tactical will maybe bring us the that closer we were before. Yeah, you know, we were close. Now I hope we can come back because we're all spread out all over the place now. Yeah. You, you know, Chris, and I think the big thing, and I, I didn't talk to you about this this morning or anything. I was waiting for now to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, last night having dinner with you, you picking you up from the airport and having dinner and going back for a cigar and just hanging out. One, we, we drank a lot of whiskey last night. We drank a lot of good whiskey last night. Good food. Good, good. But I slept fucking good, man. I actually, this morning woke up like, wow, I feel refreshed. But I think a lot of it was just, and, and, and this is for later on, maybe somewhere else, whatever, but you, you heard some of my personal story last mm. night. And for me, that was, it's a, it's a big thing in my life, man. It's intense, it's man. It's a super big thing in my life. Yeah. And last night, just talking to you and actually seeing your reaction of it, because for me, it was always like, oh my God, should I hide this from everybody? Should I, should I hold it back? Should I, should I like, no, you know, I was always scared of it. Now yeah. I'm not. Now I'm, I'm full blown ready yeah. to like, it's coming out, right? Yeah. Because I overcame some pretty big 
adversary in my life. Yeah, but I mean, you got to get that out to me. Yeah, and I, I'm going to get it out there, and Huge. I will. And I think just talking to you last night motivated me more because yeah. I saw how you looked at me and saw like, man, dude, like that's that's fucking wild. Yeah, and you need to get it out there, and and I'm gonna, and just to see the acceptance just from you alone. Mm -hmm. Like a guy of your magnitude, Green Beret, you know, police officer and everything, just to see how you 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 expressed that acceptance towards my situation, it motivated me to say, see, man, like there's no need to hide behind, yeah. you know, walls. Even though they told me to hide behind walls and it was not it was gonna be frowned upon if I if I Fuck exposed that. the fucking truth, right? Yeah. But now I'm okay with the truth, man. I'm sure they, they can talk all the shit they want. But the truth will come out now. You know and I, and I'm ready for it, right? Because yeah. I, I I mean I overcame a lot, man. I could have, I could have easily gone the wrong path. I told you I was going to take my own life, yeah. and here I am now. I got a good job, got a good family, got a decent home, you know, and I'm making good friends. And I feel again like just sitting down with you, talking to you these last couple of weeks, almost like that's what I said. Man, I'm going to go to Arizona, and hang out with you. Do it, man. <laughs> we, we 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 created a friendship. Uh, oh yeah. You know, a friendship, and we we've understood each other to to an extent, yeah. and that's what I that's what I'm aiming for on this podcast. Yeah. I want to I want to bring more individuals like yourself and like myself and and create this community of 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 information that can help out guys who are lost. Mm -hmm. Guys and gals who are lost who have have done it like we have and they're not sure how to get out there or they need help, they're feeling overwhelmed. Hey, maybe I can't pay all your bills for you or anything, but maybe I can give you some advice that's going to help you get to the right path. Cuz like you said, you hit rock bottom. Yeah. And so did I and it fucking sucks it almost feels like that's it i'm yeah. done you, you overcame q course you came a green beret like all this crazy stuff and then all this the background stuff the real fight begins yeah. right and that's what i want to hit on real quick is you're you're a living testimony mm -hmm. that there's there's a there's a possibility out there you just got to find that inner fight in yeah. you and you got to keep going so what can what's now hearing your story and everything what can you give the viewers and, and and other vets and stuff if of advice towards their life like you know i i didn't really hit on it too much on my last podcast but yeah. my podcast is called calling your shot yeah. and it's not to be all fancy like yeah yeah call your shot over at the ring no 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 i want to hear why you called your shot in life mm -hmm. right because every time you take that shot one you want to know why you're taking it What's going to happen when you take it? And then after all that, what's going to happen? Yeah. So your shot in life is pretty crazy. And you, you, you got that after feeling if, as well. But now it's almost like you're taking that second shot at life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what's your advice to people who are out there listening? Well, like you said, man, it's a lot of people in the military. I mean, we all go through a lot. You know what I mean? We're all. But there is a life afterwards. You know, it's. Yeah. Do great things in the military. You know, I love everyone that's in the military. It's what they've done, you know, take pride in all that. But there is, when you get out, there is a second life. You know, don't give up on whatever you're trying to do. You know, like a lot of people want to use this, their pain of what they got in the military. You know, it's, um, it's just pretty much don't give up. You know, we're still human. We're all vulnerable you know, at the end of it getting out you want something just get it done you know that's pretty much what i'd done when i was in the military i did it when i got out never stopped you know i don't know if there's something wrong with within my brain where i can't stop moving and going yeah but <laughs> it's pretty a lot much of us have that issue yeah <laughs> it's awesome man do you have obviously team room tactical where can we find you man where can everybody find you um, you can, I can check out my website, teamroomtactical.com. Um, also, like I said, starting social media, so Team Room Tactical 7. Um, pretty much trying to post up all my, all my work that I do on there. I do have one other guy trying to help me out. We're trying to, you know, do some pretty intense Cerakote and pretty proud of it. And I'll, I'll link your stuff in the description. And also, you were obviously sponsored last podcast, sponsor this one as well. And, and I'll, I'll add that again. Right. But, um, yeah. I, I encourage you guys as listeners to, to check out your stuff. Um, cause there's meaning behind it, right? It's not, oh, some, yeah. it's not some random corporation making, you know, custom firearms and, and all that crazy stuff. Like it's, it's actually, 
it's coming from a team room, man, in his backyard. And like, you know, <laughs> you know, all your blood, sweat and tears and, and your finances are in it, man. And yeah. I encourage people to support you and I'm going to support you. And I think what you're doing is great. And I'm, I take my hat off to everything you've done and have been able to overcome. And I know that it's not all set in stone now, that it's all fixed. It's all great. You're going to probably go back down those paths, maybe mentally or, or, or whatnot. But I'm, I'm glad to see that you've you've caught yourself and you're now moving in another really good direction, right? Like mm. You had that swinging moment, but then you caught back up and you're like, all right, let's go again, right? So now you're almost like when you were in a Green Beret, right? You were, I mean, you're still a Green Beret. You've all, you're right. always going to be a Green Beret, right? <laughs> but when you were in... You, you had that pretty successful career. You were doing well. And then all of a sudden, bam, you know, life hits you. But you're right back at it again. You're doing it again. And I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing that, man. Awesome. Um, other than that, do you have anything else you want to let the listeners know, man? I'm just happy to be here. I appreciate the invite. And had a great time. Maybe I'll come back out again. Yeah. I'm, I'm, out. I'm glad to have you out here, man. <laughs> um, I think this will be great. I, oh, I yeah. hope people find some some motivation out of this and, sure. and see that, you know, life isn't pretty, but yeah. you can always find a way out of that, yeah. that hole. Right. Yeah. Well, man, thank you very much. Thank you for your service. I, I appreciate everything you've done. I appreciate having on, having you on this podcast and I look forward to our friendship, man. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was, it was great, man. You might be stuck with me forever. Who knows? There you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> might have to go crash out in your team. Yeah. Right, yeah. Man. That'll work yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, man. And thanks yeah, for everybody yeah. for listening. And I hope to keep serving, serving more stories like yourself, you know, and anybody who's out there who has a good similar story and you feel like it needs to be told. Oh, yeah. Chris did. Right? So come on out. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.